What's up, Wizards? It's Dev, SBMTG. We are live on twitch.tv slash SBMTG. Dev, looking at some, I was going to say spoilers, but it's actually time to do a time, what is becoming a time-honored tradition around here. We're going to review uh, the entire set. We're going to read every single card, assign it some sort of numbered grade from zero to five, and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. The usual things apply. We are mostly evaluating for standard. If a card is decent and limited or commander, I will make that call, but it won't often affect the ratings. Sometimes decency and limited will affect the ratings by a quarter point or a half a point or something, but you'll definitely know when a card is good in standard and for that matter beyond. We are mostly evaluating for constructed a tonight. Remember, uh, usually I go on a whole spiel about this, but tonight we're trying to condense things. Remember that 2.5 is actually a halfway decent score. If I give anything a 3.25, that is a really good magic card. If it's a 4, good lord. So let's just get into it. As soon as I open this folder, we're going to basically start the uh, clock tonight. So what is the time on my stream as I do this? 34 minutes and 10 seconds. Let's see if I can remember that and do any math. Let's, let's figure it out. All right, let's go. Murders all. That's a hell of a folder to open. All right, so absolving Lamasu here. This is the five mana four three flyer that when it ETBs, all the suspected creatures ain't suspected no more. And when it dies, you get three life, and you also suspect up to one creature in opponent controls. So limited playable, probably. I mean, a five mana four three flyer that gains you three life when it dies messes around with one of the set's key mechanics. I will give this a one point seven five. First score of the night. I'm feeling good, baby. Aftermath analyst is two mana one and a green for a one three elf detective. When an ETB is your mill three, and then you can uh, pay for and sack it to splendid reclamation. You just return all the lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This is a ridiculous card, uh, especially for an uncommon. It's really. Seems really, really good. Kind of feels like a world shaper or whatever that was called from, the, I think, the first Ixalan. It was a while back now, but not too long ago. Either way, uh, powerful looking uncommon that fits into, I think, multiple decks, not just the, like, cruel somnophage piles and stuff like that. I think this probably has some real work to do. It's real ramp. It's a decent body in the early game, and it's got a relevant ETB trigger. So this is probably going to be one of the better scores that we see in a while. I will give this a 2.75, uh, right around there. Agency Coroner is the five mana three six that you can pay three and sack a creature to draw a card. And if you sack the suspected creature, you draw two. So the booty on this is really, really big. One of the bigger butts in the entire set, actually. I think this is somewhat relevant and limited. Has a decent little you know, card advantage -y. You have to come off board presence, obviously, but you get a little card advantage for irrelevant dudes in the later game. Trade them in. You know, try to cash them in for something D's. You know, I don't hate this. I'd probably give this a 1.5, something like that. Agency Outfitter up next. The 6 mana 4 3 flyer that goes in tutors for more or less irrelevant cards in the set. Magnifying Glass and Thinking Cap. But it does put them onto the battlefield, which is pretty neat if they do end up in your limited deck. But I can't give this more than a 2. It is a 4 3, which I don't love, but in this set, we don't have a whole lot of removal that cares about a 3 toughness stat line. You know, there's no like lightning strike. In the set but obviously in standard if you do play this it will put two things on the battlefield which feels pretty good even if your opponent does kill it somehow but it will basically never see play in that format so a two is about the highest i can give it and even that is a uh, probably a quarter point too high if i'm being honest i just like the dude agris costs our first mythic here the four mana boros thing to two four spirit detective with double strike and vigilance and when it um enters the battlefield or attacks you choose up to one target creature if it's suspected exile it otherwise suspect it so the idea i guess is that it suspects something when it comes into play and then when it goes to attack it can exile that thing if you can give it haste somehow it seems all right and i do like double strike so it's kind of a four four if you can increase its power in any way it's it strikes for a lot right and again i do think if you can engineer giving haste to this thing it becomes much better but as it is it's not a great card in a vacuum i'd have to give this card a two point two five something like that i it might get as much as a two and a half but i don't think it's that good let's go two point two five um, which is why I should have given that uh, tutor for two garbage cards thing a uh, 1.75. I really should have. I should amend that because this is more of a 2.25 and I don't really want them to be close. Airtight Alibi is up next. Three mana for an aura. Flash, enchant a creature. When it enters the battlefield, untap the creature. That creature gains hexproof till end of turn. If it's not suspected, or if it is suspected, it's no longer suspected. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two can't become suspected. A lot of text on a card for basically a trick 
that counters a removal spell, <laughs> you know, but it also makes the creature much, much bigger. I like that, but the mana cost is just way too high on this one and a half. A Killer Among Us. This is the five mana enchantment that puts three things onto the table, and then you choose one of their creature types. And then you can sacrifice the enchantment and reveal the creature type you chose to have a target attacking creature token of the chosen type get three plus one plus one counters and gain death touch till EOT. I actually think this was all right. This almost made the sleepers list. If I had done five honorable mentions, I might have brought it up, but I don't think it's quite there. Five mana is too much, but it does put, you know, what, six power on the table on three dudes for five mana, which is okay. It's really, really not that bad. Um, it puts an enchantment on the table for what it's worth. So I think there's probably fun stuff to do with this and kind of janky piles. So I'll just give it a two. Alley Assailant is up next. Three mana for a 3-3 Vampire Rogue that eat the beast tap. Disguise for six mana. And when you do turn it face up, an opponent loses three life, you gain three life. So that is a lot. That is so much to flip up to probably not even really blow them out with your 3-3. I don't like this guy that much. Um, just a three mana 3-3 would have been decent, but they had to make him eat to be tapped. So... It's not a huge fan. He doesn't actually affect the board state when he flips up, but eh, just not all around. Stats are okay, but not a great card. I have to give him a 1.25. Alquist Proft, Master Sleuth. I'm a little afraid of grading this guy. He's three mana for a 3-3 legendary detective who's also a human. He's got vigilance, and when he ETBs, you investigate. You can also just uh, tap him, sack a clue, and cast Sphinx's Revelation. You have to pay the mana cost, too, for Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> but you draw X cards, you gain X life for X white, blue, blue, tap, sack clue. So that seems uh, really very good. <laughs> it seems okay, but obviously he's just okay stats. He does have a keyword ability. He does have an ETB trigger, though. And if he stays in play for a turn, um, really, if he stays in play for many turns and you can, you know, Sphinx is red for like four or five, then suddenly he probably won you the game uh, due to his existence. So I don't want to count this guy out and I almost want to call him a sleeper because I think a lot of people forgot about him or just aren't that impressed by him, but I can't rightfully call him a sleeper. I think he's a great card, but time will tell if he's one of the better cards in the set or not. Uh, all things considered though, I will give this a 2.75 with room to grow. This could be a three, but... Before it proves itself, it's a two and three quarters. Analyze the pollen up next. This is a green mana for a source. As an additional cost to cast it, you have to collect evidence eight. You don't have to. You may collect evidence eight. Search your library for a basic land card. If evidence was collected, instead search your library for a creature or land card. Reveal the card, put it in your hand, and shuffle. So, kind of feels like a traverse the Olvenwald or something like that, but... In some ways, I think it's better, which is really saying something, because Traverse was a great card. This will allow certain green decks to just play four fewer basic lands. You play this card instead. It's really, really sweet. So maybe that's a, it's a there's a case for this in the Cruel Somnophage or Stick Fingers deck. But there's a green-black deck that probably wants a piece like this. I don't know if it plays the four. Um, Dig Up is already a thing that Golgari decks could be playing that they only play every now and again, like very sparingly. So I'm not sure they go for this, but there's definitely a world where the card is playable. I'll give this a three. I will give this a three. I just think that this kind of tutor is really good a lot of the time. And it actually tends to get better the farther back you go um, format wise. So I think it's a good card. Anzrag's Rampage is up next. Five mana for a sorcery, destroy all artifacts. You don't control, then exile the top X cards of your library. X is the number of artifacts that were put into graveyards from the battlefield this turn. You may put a creature card exiled this way onto the battlefield against haste, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So, if you can look at the top three or four and get the best out of, you know, that, and just slap it onto the table for a turn, I think it's okay. I think it's okay, but I really think you have to jump through a lot of hoops. You have to probably just sack treasures to cast the spell, but that's going to include, you know, in standard at least, Charming Scoundrel on two, Charming Scoundrel on three, big score on four, and then on turn five, you can cast this. You didn't use any of the treasures. You didn't do anything but cast, you know, two one ones and a spell that didn't actually affect the board state. So this better hit the Itali, and it really ought to do it on turn four. You can do it on four. Um, with the line I've described, it just won't be as potent. You'll only look at the top two or three. And I don't like that. I want to look at five, you know, <laughs> I want to look at at least five. You might be able to catch one of your opponents, you know, map tokens or something up and that's in that swell, but I wouldn't count on it. I would really just count on building your deck around making sure you have enough artifacts in play 
um, treasures really to sacrifice the turn you play this. You could try sacking clues or maps or bloods or whatever, but unless you have a free way to do that that's not mana intensive, this card already costs five to cast, and you really want to cast it on turn four if you want to win the game with it. So I think there's probably, again, janky stuff, but we're really looking at like big, stupid red rare you have to build your deck around of the set, and those aren't usually great. So this one could surprise us. I do think there's some cool things about this card, but all things considered, I just have to give it like a two and a quarter, something like that. I'm really tempted to just give it a two and move on, to be honest. But Anzrag, holy moly, the Quake Mole. This is four mana, two and a red and a green for an 8-4 legendary mole god. And whenever it becomes blocked, you untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. You can pay seven mana to have Anzrag uh, must be able to, must be blocked each combat this turn if able. Sorry for the read on that one. Um, but yeah, seven mana they have to block it, so theoretically you're guaranteed to get more attack steps. And this does allow you to get three, four attack steps in a turn. There's multiple ways to give him indestructible at reasonably cheap cost. Tamiya's safekeeping, blah, blah, blah. Um, Tyvar's stand, you know. So for just a single mana, <laughs> you can make him indestructible. And then if you do have, you know, seven mana left over after that... <laughs> <laughs> then maybe, just maybe, you can get a bunch of combat steps and just like slowly wear down all of your opponent's creatures until they die. So that would be fun. But I, I do think that maybe if you swing in and they and they block it, thinking, oh, they'll just get one more attack step. That's all they'll get. That's fine. I can kill it and they'll get one more attack step. And then you Tamiya safekeeping it, not spending any of this mana, you know. But it's, if, if, you, if you then Tamiya safekeeping it um, after blocks... Then you're, you're guaranteed to get another attack step with it. They probably won't block it then, but I think you probably still win the game in that situation. Just a really good card. Um, there's no downside on this, like, whatsoever. Four mana is reasonably cheap for this. Four mana is where we start the conversation on, like, is this card too expensive and standard? But four mana seems like a bargain for this. So, holy guacamole. This <laughs> I gotta give this... Like a three and a half, which is probably sli it's probably a quarter point too high. It, honestly, this is probably a quarter point too high. Let's keep it at a... No, let's do three and a half. Let's do three and a half. I expect things. I do. Um, Arch Druid's Charm is up next. My goodness. Uh, this is three green mana for an instant. Choose one. Search your library for a creature or land card and reveal it. Put it onto the battlefield tapped if it's a land card. Otherwise, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It deals damage equal to its power to a creature you don't control, or exile an artifact or enchantment. So, oh, this is um one of my picks for, you know, one of the best cards in the set. Pretty easily. It's one of the best cards we've seen in a while. I thought it might be a cycle at first, but comment section informed me, thankfully, and thank you very much, that it it's actually is part of a cycle, but not in this set. We already saw the blue one. In like a Modern Horizons, I hope I got that right. Just one of the Commander-only sets. And now we see the green one. And this is a phenomenal magic card. <laughs> this is really, really good. All of the modes on this are great. Um, the first mode doesn't look amazing, right? But it's instant speed. This is instant speed ramp. This is instant speed creature tutor. Um, that's just fantastic. There's just no other way around it. Like even the weakest looking mode on the card is very powerful. Some people might not really be into paying three whole mana for the bite effect on this, but you do get a plus one, plus one counter, right? And if you need a removal spell, you got a removal spell. You don't want to use it this way every time, but it's it's a reasonable rate if it's all you got. And then exile an artifact or enchantment. Again, this is probably a mana too much, but for the utility you're getting in this package, this card just kind of blows my mind that it exists at all. So I have to give this card a 3.75. It is probably as close to a four as we'll get tonight, barring any other anomalies but this is a very good magic card not to say it's going to see play in standard on day one but for the rest of time this will be a, a played magic card basically assassin's trophy is up next what do you give assassin's trophy this is the two mana golgari instant reprint but i still want to read it destroy a permanent opponent controls its controller may search their library for a basic land put it on the field shuffle so this is obviously a playable removal spell it's played in more or less every format it's available to be played in but still, I can't give a strong removal spell more than about a three and a quarter. That's what a very strong removal spell gets. It's not going to 
break the game. It's not itself broken, right? But it is strong. Lots of decks will play it. That's three and a quarter right there. Assemble the players is an interesting one. Two mana for an enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Once during each turn, you may cast a creature spell with power two or less from the top of your library. Very interesting with flash creatures and stuff like that, right? Um, but will it? Is it worth skipping a turn in a constructed environment to play this card? I don't know. Uh, the professor did put this on his pioneer list. I think it's a very early pick, you know, number one or two. Um, and I'm not too sure about the assessment, to be honest. I, I don't, I'm just, I can't make a real call about this card's playability. And it bugs me because a lot of the cards I'm fairly clear on, like how I feel about them in this set. This is not one. I'm not like super sure about it. Not only did you skip a turn, but it's going to whiff on some turns. There's going to be a land on top of your library or spell or something. Um, and yeah, you can build your deck in such a way that you can scry past those or whatever. But still, even even if you build your deck correctly, there's just some turns where you have a land on top and there's not really boo you can do about it. So this is a dead card you spent two mana for. You're not getting any value out of. But if this effectively draws you two cards in a game, it was probably worth the investment. So hard to say. I think this is a commander all-star in some ways because it's going to be turns where it doesn't give you the value and you don't really care. But in standard and beyond, you really have to get a lot of juice out of your cards, even in standard. So... I just think, you know, there's going to be too many games where you cast this on two, skipping your turn two, and it whips two turns in a row, you get no value out of it. Or you just want to play the cards that are in your hand anyway, you know, like, oh, I have a three drop creature I can play, and I'd rather play the Graveyard Trespasser than the two power creature on top of my library. I'd rather use my mana more effectively, right? So, you, you know, I spent my turn two play and didn't use the card on turn three or turn four, and it's just, I don't know, man. It is white card advantage, and that's decent. Uh, might be decent in like a mid-range deck or even a control deck that plays enough creatures, you know, does this the right way. Again, flash creatures, blah, blah. So I think there's places for the card to go, but I have my doubts on this one. So I'm just going to give it a two and a half. And um, maybe it's better than that. <laughs> maybe. Audience with Tristani is up next. Three mana, two and a green for a sorcery. Create a zero one plant and then draw cards equal to the number of differently named creature tokens you control. That's a lot of hoops to jump through. If we're being adults about things, which is kind of one of the points of these speed run constructed only reviews, is that we got to be adults. We got to be able to say when a card is bad. This, again, you got to build your deck accordingly. But I'm still not convinced that even if you build your deck around, it's great. I think in Commander, it draws five sometimes, and it's pretty good. But in Standard, it might draw two or three, and that sounds good, but is it? Is it? To put a zero one one in play on turn three and draw up two cards, is that acceptable? Maybe in some decks. Maybe in some. But acceptable enough to be, like, a real card in Standard? I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things you play on turn five to refill. That could be it. Um, so I could be way off base on this one, but I'm going to give this a two and a half as well. I know it sounds crazy. Like that piece of white card draw everybody loves, you know, is two and a half. Um, I just, I, I have my doubts. This, I'm going to actually give a two and a half as well because I, I like it and don't like it for almost the same reasons <laughs> that I don't, that I do like that last card. At least this puts a body on the table, but it's not a very good body. Uh, if your deck just, just wants to block and, and draw some cards, though, stall for the later game, maybe. Maybe. You know, uh, maybe there's situations where you don't block with the 0-1 because your opponent's not playing too many creatures. You play a Nyssa, Ascended Animist, and suddenly the token actually attacks for damage, like real damage, you know? So, like, there's things. There's things. But I just, ultimately, as much as I want to, like, Turn two, Teachings of the Kirin. Turn three, Jugun defends the temple. Turn four, this, I guess, and like draw three. It's not, it's probably not good enough, honestly. So, But I will give it a two and a half, which is close to a decent card. Because I, I, I just, there's something about it. There's something about it, but I don't trust it either. Aurelia's Vindicator is up next. This card's getting some press. This is four mana for a 4-2 Angel with Flying Life Link and Ward 2. It's got Disguise 4 and X, and when it's turned face up, exile up to X other target creatures from the battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. When Vindicator leaves the bath the bathroom, <laughs> I was going to say bathroom. When Vindicator leaves the battlefield, <laughs> what's wrong with me? Return the exiled cards to their owner's hands. You knew that line of text was going to be on the card. I don't think this is very good. Obviously... 
I've heard commander players talk about it, but I don't want to mention that format too often tonight unless it's really pertinent. As far as constructed goes, I think this is really only tempting in standard, and, and there I don't love it. I don't like too many disguised dudes in standard. There's only one or two that I think are acceptable, and this is borderline, but I don't think it quite makes it, you know? So, I don't love the stats on this. I just, I don't know, man. I do think this is a really powerful mode, and I do like that it's at instant speed. You know, that's cool. Can't be interacted with. That's how disguise works. So, well, it can be interacted with, but, it, you know, it's it's faster than instant speed, <laughs> basically. Um, you can interact with this trigger, though. When it's turned face up, do a thing. You can interact with that. But still, I, I, think it's, I think it's a fine card, but I don't love it as much as I've seen. I guess some people praise it. So I will stick this in the 2.5 camp as well. No, no, no. I'll stick this in the two and a quarter camp. I'm actually going down a quarter point on this card. I want to like it. Maybe Angel decks can make some use of it or something, but I'm just not seeing it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong on this one, but I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I think it's way too mana intensive. Aurelia the Law Above is 5 mana for a 4-4 legendary angel with flying vigilance and haste. Whenever any player attacks with 3 or more creatures, you draw a card. Whenever any player attacks with 5 or more creatures, the Law Above deals 3 damage to each of your opponents. You gain 3 life, so cast Lightning Helix when people attack with lots of stuff, yourself and opponents included. So, not bad, but 5 mana, man. It's good that it has haste. I think haste really helps this card out an awful lot. Um, I like that obviously it counts itself, so you really have to only attack with two other things the turn that it comes out to draw your card. Um, and that seems like a good position, you know, um, especially if you can somehow ramp into it ahead of schedule, like turn four, draw a card and attack with a 4-4 four, four haste. Yeah, that seems good. So, hmm. I want to like this, and if it ever triggers for Lightning Helix, that could help you win the game, because, you know, I assume you're attacking with five dudes and casting Lightning Helix to the face, so... That probably helps you win, but at the same time, five mana, and then you attack with five dudes. And so it seems like it's really good for aggro decks, but there's no aggro deck right now that wants a five drop. So, you know, I got to have my doubts about this too. But again, they slapped haste on it. It might be halfway decent. Commander plays, you know, there. This could also go in the uh, Mardu Angels deck. So at least I got to say there is a home for it in standard, you know. So I'll give this card a 2.75. This card gets a 2.75. Yeah. Yeah, the card is cool. Auspicious Arrival is a combat trick. Two mana for an instant. Creature gets plus two, plus two till end of turn. Investigate. They slapped Investigate on a number of effects we'd normally see anyway. I kind of like these cards. Um, they seem particularly interesting in draft, where it looks like we're... I just want to make this point one time. It looks like we're back to a sort of environment that's a little slower, a little grindier, and a little more about... Um, making sure that you're the one that, that grinds out like incremental advantage over the course of a game, a card that eventually pays you back, uh, uh, you know, another card. There's a lot of cards like that in this environment. Um, there's a lot of payoff for skipping your turn three to play a two, two, you know, um, it looks like it's going to be a, a fairly slowish sort of enjoyable format. If you like stuff like that, again, like attrition, grinding out card advantage, card by card. You know, this card is actually, I'm only spending half a card because I get investigate off of it. And there's a lot of cards like that in the set. And I kind of like that design. So altogether, I've spent too long on this card though. This is supposed to be a speed run. So I'll just give the card a 1.25. Axbane Ferox is up next. A four mana, four, four beast with death, touch and haste. It's also got ward collect evidence Four. this is halfway decent. Not sure that it's better than Olvenwald oddity. I think you want the trample in your mono green stompy deck most of the time, but you know, not being able to target it as easily is really a big gain. That's, that's really, really nice. So I guess I would score it about the same thing I would score in Olvenwald Oddity, which is a 2.5. Well, 2.75. <laughs> Somewhere in that neighborhood, you know. Barb Servitor. I like this thing. I like Barb. Barbara is four mana for a 1 1 artifact creature. It's construct, but indestructible. When an ETB is suspected. Now, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card, you lose a life. Whenever it's dealt damage, Target opponent loses that much life. So if they don't block it, you draw cards. If they do block it, they take presumably a lot of damage. Um, and it's indestructible. So again, it feels like a brash taunter. They can't do cool stuff. They can't block and stuff. But I do like it. But altogether, it's kind of gimmicky. It's a meme. I don't think it sees that much play. But it is a cool card. I like this design. And I will play with it multiple times. But as far as actual power level, 2.25, somewhere in there. 
Basilica Stalker is six mana for a 3-4 vamp detective with flying. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you gain a life, you surveil one. Also disguises for five mana. I don't mind a 3-4 flyer in this limited, but I'm just going to give this a one and a half. Behind the mask is one mana, a blue mana for an instant. As an additional cost to cast it, you can collect evidence six. Till end of turn, target artifact or creature becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness four three. If evidence was collected, it has base power and toughness one one till end of turn instead. Get blown out, kid. Get wrecked. Go home. Um, <laughs> card seems like it might be kind of fun, but I'm not sure it's quite there. 1.75. Benthic Criminologist is five mana for a four five merfolk wizard. When it ETBs or attacks, you can sack an artifact. If you do, you draw a card. Eh, it's interesting interesting decent body and limited worth card draw it's a decent outlet for all the clues you've generated throughout the game right so eh, it's not too terrible but i'll just give this a one and a half all things considered bite down on crime is four mana for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast it you can collect evidence six spell costs two less to cast if you did collect the evidence target creature you control gets plus two plus zero till end of turn and then bites a creature you don't control okay so if it costs two mana it's still sorcery speed that's not great so I do like the power boost, kind of feels Blizzard brawly, but you'd really want indestructibility too, so eh, it's just not super great. I'm going to give this a 1.75. Sure. Sure. Limited playable removal spell, 1.75. Blood Spatter Analysis. No idea why this card needed to be rare, but it's Rakdos colors, a black and a red for an enchantment. When it ETBs, it deals three damage to a creature an opponent controls. Whenever one or more creatures die, mill a card and put a bloodstain counter on Blood Spatter Analysis. Then sack it if it has five or more counters on it. When you do, return a creature from your yard to your hand. So, a lightning strike against creatures only that eventually casts Raise Dead. Actually seems pretty good. Five creatures is a lot, I have to say that. I also just now noticed that it mills a card. I think I've read this card five times and never really internalized that it mills a card. That's kind of interesting. Could be good. Um, so, not terrible. I think the card might actually see some real play. Hate the sorcery speed, but you might be able to parlay the fact that it's a permanent or an enchantment or whatever into some sort of value some way or another. There's going to be turns where it never actually gets you your card advantage, which is what the card is trying to do. But even in games where it doesn't do that, it's still removed a creature. So I'm going to give this a 2.25. Yes. I, yeah, I think it's a pretty good card. Bullrack Clan Basher is 6 mana. 4 and 2 red for a 3-2 Cyclops Warrior with double strike and trample. Disguise, 5 mana. Flipping this dude up, especially unblocked, is really sweet. And even when he's blocked, it's probably still really nice. But no standard play. 1.5. Branch of Vitu Gazi is a land. You can tap it. For a single colorless, it comes into play untapped. You can also disguise it for three. So, you know, you play it for three, flip it up for three. When it's turned face up, add two mana of any one color. Till end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases in. Thanks for the payback there. So this kind of technically only costs one mana to face up. That's really interesting. Trixie card, like the design on this, but I don't think it's actually going too many places unless I am just completely nuts and missing something really big on this so i don't i just don't think in standard or any format you want to pay three mana on turn three skip your turn three to be like whoop whoop it's a land you know i just don't think <laughs> you know subsequent turns you want to say you want to sit on three mana so you can block your opponent's biggest guy and be like huh, fog your biggest guy dog that's a land idiot like, i don't think you <laughs> i don't think it's worth it <laughs> in constructed formats so I'll just give this like a one and a half. <laughs> Breakout is two mana, a red and a green for a sorcery. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them. If that card has mana value two or less, you can put it onto the field and it gains haste till end of turn. If you didn't put the revealed card onto the field this way, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Um, I guess it's supposed to be like action movie one-liner flavor text. It's kind of funny. Not actually that good, is it? It looks good, but is it actually that good? I'm not sure. Probably decent in combo decks. It's probably the real home for this. Is decks that need to find that guy. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm running four of this guy and four of that guy. This will help me get to them as quickly as possible. And I can just throw them right onto the table. You know, so I do like that about it. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think this card is terrible. So if anything, like this, the floor on this is two mana sorcery speed draw card, which is bad. But <laughs> at least it did something. You know. Um, I, you know, I, I'm warming up to it, but I still can't give it more than like a two and a half um, or 2.25. Which one is it? Be courageous. Don't chicken out. Actually assign a grade to this card. I would give this like a two and a half if you build around it, because that's what you're going to be doing most of the time anyway. So. 
Bubble Smuggler. One of my, it's probably my favorite name for a card in the whole set. Two mana for a 2-1 Octopus Fish with Disguise 6. It's turn face up, put four counters on it. Just elegant, you know. Sometimes it's a small guy. Sometimes it's a big guy. Depends on how much mana you got, how much time you got. Well, I, just, I don't know. I like the design on this, but no standard play. 1.5. Burden of Proof is two mana for an enchantment. It's a flash aura that enchants a creature. And the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two if it's detected that you control. If it's not either of those things, it has base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, and can't block detects. <laughs> Kind of interesting. This almost made the sleepers list too, but we have Eaten by Piranhas, which is a super similar card that I believe also has Flash. Hasn't done much outside of Commander, but it isn't a ton of Commander decks. This could go in them too. It's actually halfway decent. I'll give it a two. Buried in the Garden. This is four mana, two, a green and a white for an R that enchants a land. When an ETBs exile a non-land permanent you don't control until Buried leaves the battlefield. Whenever enchanted lands tap for mana, you get an additional mana. So Wild Growth stapled to an Oblivion Ring. I think this is actually a pretty good magic card. I don't want to give removal spells like too high of a grade, but I'm going to give this a 2.25 because I think it's really playable. But again, removal spells have kind of a ceiling. You know, like we gave Assassin's Trophy 3.25 because I think it's kind of the absolute ceiling on a removal spell. This is nowhere close to that absolute ceiling. So I think 2.25 is is a good score. Um, but I do think it's playable. I actually think that um, probably the floor on playability for this is sideboard domain ramp. Right? There's going to be times where like Invasion of Ixalan or Zendikar. Invasion of Zendikar is just a really bad card. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. For the situation, you're just going to get smashed into. You'd rather remove a guy in ramp one against certain aggro decks. And I think Buried is going to come in from the board. But it may have even more work to do. Call a surprise witness is two mana. One and a white for a sorcery. Return a creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gets a flying counter, and now it's a spirit. Neat version of this effect. But I'm just going to give this uh, two at the absolute most. Candlestick, a single blue mana for a clue equipment. It means you can pay two, sack it, draw a card. You can equip it for two. And once you do, the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever the creature attacks or veil two. Um, all of these are probably going to get very similar scores. But I actually think they're halfway decent. I'm going to give this a 1.75, but that's actually only about 35% decent. Case File Auditor is three mana for a 1-4 Human Detective when it ETBs and whenever you solve a case. Look at the top six of your library. Reveal an enchantment from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom, random order. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast case spells. That's neat. It's a neat little thing, a little bit parasitic, but it does allow you to grab any enchantment from the top six. Um, on just ETB, which is almost good enough, you know? So... This is actually neat. I'll give it a solid two. Um, solid two. If I could dole out 2.1s, I would give it to 2.1. Case of the Burning Masks is three mana, one and two red. When it ETBs, it deals three damage to a creature an opponent controls. To solve, three or more sources you control dealt damage this turn. Solved, sacrifice this case, exile the top three of your library, choose one of them, play it, the, play it this turn if you want to. Um, probably not quite worth it, right, in mono red decks. Um... I don't think so. I really don't. So as neat as the design is and as intriguing as it is, I think I'm going to give this like a two, something like that. Case of the Crimson Pulse is three mana, two and a red. When an ETB is discard a card, draw two cards. To solve it, you have to have no cards in your hand during your end step. And once it's solved, at the beginning of your upkeep, discard your hand, draw two cards. That's a really, really good card, man. Um, I thought this was a sleeper. And I will still say it's a sleeper, but I did have people in the comments like, man, Case of the Crimson Pulse might be the best card in the set. <laughs> you know, like there were multiple people in the comments section calling this perhaps the best card in the set. And I don't know if I go that far, but I do think this card is really good. Um, I'm fairly certain, by the way, the way this works, that like, let's say with a Tormenting Voice or all the other cards people are comparing this to, part of casting the card is the discarding of the card. You know, as an additional cost to cast Tormenting Voice or whatever card, you may you, can, you have to discard a card. This doesn't say that. This is when an ETBs discard a card, then draw two cards. So, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure chat will here, but I'm fairly certain if you don't have a card to discard, it doesn't matter, and you still get to draw two when it ETBs. If this was the last card in your hand when you cast it. Um, which is also, that would be a cool thing to remember, right? And it is extremely, chat is pointing out, it's very easy to solve, and yes, apparently that is a correct thing. So, <laughs> yeah, if you don't have any cards in your hand when you play it, you just draw two. It's just a bad divination. 
which is fine. Um, I will say it's not conducive to solving itself because it gives you cards, right? <laughs> you don't, like the turn you play this, it will not solve. Almost guaranteed, right? Especially if you play it on curve, it's just probably not going to happen. <clears throat> so there is that. Maybe you have a way to just, dis- maybe you play Guardian of New Benalia on turn two. And then on turn three, you play this and then you just discard your entire hand like an idiot. I don't, th- I don't know if you want to do that or not. <laughs> I guess it's a play line you could take. Um, altogether, though, I can't talk about any one card too long. And I've probably already done that with too many cards too many times. So I will give this a three. I expect things from this, if nothing else in Commander. But a card that <laughs> you've seen me play Magic on Arena. You, you know the reputation that we have on Arena. I mean... I have a reputation for not being the best magic player, but I also kind of am garnering a reputation for having the worst luck in terms of top decking. And I always get lands. That's the joke around here. It's going to be a land. And it is. So any card that like saves me from top deck mode and keeps me from flooding, like I'm very interested in. So I'm going to give this a three case of the filched, (laughs) the filched Falcon is a blue mana. This was in the sleepers video too. It's a single blue mana. When an ETBs investigate to solve it, you have to have three or more arties. And if you solve it, you can still have to pay three mana. <laughs> Once you've solved it, you pay two and a blue and sack this case to put four plus one plus one counters on a non creature artifact that becomes a bird with flying. Um, he's really good. I think this card is really good. Um, haven't heard really many people talk about it, which surprises me because I think the card is just obviously good when you read it. It's like, Oh, okay. So, one mana clue, three mana four, three flyer that I can turn into a flyer at instant speed. Control three artifacts. Okay, it's easy. You know, I just, come on. I feel like this card's great. It's like 2.75, pretty easy. Pretty easy. I'm serious. And this card probably sees some play. Case of the Gateway Express is two mana, one on a white. When an ETBs, choose a creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. To solve, three or more creatures have to have attacked this turn. And once it's solved, creatures you control... Get plus one plus zero. Okay. Here's the deal. This card's okay. (laughs) This was close to to the Sweepers video, but I felt like I was already overloaded on cases for that video. I wanted to include Case of the Gorgon's Kiss, and I just couldn't do that. Um, Had another card I wanted. Sudden Setback ended up, I think, in its place. But in any case... (laughs) In any case... All right, so... I think this is a case that people need to be talking about more. But not necessarily an amazing card. Not necessarily, you know? I think that if it does take something out when it comes into play, and then eventually gives you an Anthem effect, that's good. That's two mana for an Anthem effect and a removal spell? Okay, you know, I, it's probably worth skipping your turn two for. The problem is you skipped your turn two, so you're less likely to attack with three creatures as easily, right? In your aggro deck, so that's kind of an issue. You'd probably want to play this on, like, turn four. Um, and theoretically, you'd want to play it turn three or four to get the anthem effect right here's the aggravating thing about that cases don't actually solve to your end step so the turn that you solved this three guys have to have attacked right but they don't actually get the power bonus until eot which is garbage you have to wait till the next turn to actually get like the bonus for attacking um you know you know what i'm saying the bonus out of this which there, there's like awkward things about it but i still think that it's a case we should be talking about if you play this on four and don't win the game, you know? Like, you play it on four, remove that guy, deal, like, three or four damage to a guy, uh, remove it, and then next turn, you just have this Anthem effect. I think you're doing pretty good. I think you're doing okay. This this case looks fine. So, I... Altogether, even though, again, there's awkward things about it, I'm still going to give this a 2.25, um, which, you know, isn't terrible for a removal spell. I just think, you know, a removal spell with an Anthem effect stapled to it for a relatively low cost... We're kind of getting there. We're kind of getting there. Case of the Gorgon's Kiss. There it is. This is a single black mana when an ETBs destroy up to one creature that was dealt damage this turn. To solve, three or more creature cards were put into graveyards from anywhere this turn. Important word. Solved. This case is a 4-4 Gorgon creature with death touch and lifelink in addition to its other types. So, interesting card here in that you can play it on one and not even really care about the first mode on it. Um, And then on the next turn... You might get very lucky with that, like, that two drop that we saw earlier that mills three cards when it comes into play. You might get very lucky with, like, a Blanchwood Prowler. You might get very lucky with an Undead Butler. You might get very lucky with an Otherworldly Gaze. You know, there's there's, there's ways to get lucky and have, have yourself a 4-4 four, four on turn two during your end step with this card. Um, all, that, all that said, though, I think that in Stick Fingers decks in general, 
that, you know, Death Spore Sprout or whatever it's called on turn one into, you know, turn two, turn three, you start doing more Millie stuff, then there's actually, you know, a real case. <laughs> I hate to keep using the word for a card like this. The problem in stick fingers is always that you need a critical mass of creatures and you can't play that many cards that aren't creatures, right? Because all of your cards want creatures in the yard and they work off of that. And this isn't a creature, so that sucks, but I do think there's maybe a spot for this. But I can't really call it anything more than a sleeper. I'll give it a two. I'll give it a two. <laughs> maybe it's way, way better than that, though. Like, maybe it's really, really good. Um... There's probably whole decks, especially once you go back into like Pioneer and stuff. I can easily flip this in one. I say flip this, make this a 4 4 the turn it comes into play. I will also say, by the way, that if there is a combat situation and you lose your guy and then you play this and they lose their guy, only like one other dude has to have died in combat for you to get your 4 4. And like, that's the thing we should remember. So. Maybe I should boost it to two and a quarter, but I don't, I'll just leave it at a two for now. Case of the locked hot house is four mana. You can play an additional land on each of your turns. Neat. To solve it, you have to have seven or more lands. And once it's solved, you can look at the top card of your library anytime, and then you can play lands and cast creature and enchantments from the top of your library. Good Lord. Commander card, all things considered. I, I'm not sure if four mana is maybe slightly too slow for this in standard, especially for a card that's not guaranteed to pay off on the turn that you play it. Maybe if you have Sunfall cocked and loaded for the next turn, you can play this a little more confidently, but does it take the place of Invasion of, of Zendikar? Well, maybe not. So, I really think this last mode is incredible. Incredible. I'm sorry, French people in chat. Um, I, I, this last mode is wonderful. <laughs> really is. Um, and it's honestly really easy to solve. We already have like Topiary Stomper and Standard and stuff and decks that get to seven lands. So I like it. I think it's good card advantage, but I look at it and see a commander card mostly. So I'll give this a 2.5. Yeah, the, the solve case is just, the solve state is, you, you can't ignore that. So I'll give it a two and a half. Case of the Pilfered Proof is two mana, one on a white. When a detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, it gets plus one, plus one counter. To solve, you have to have three or more detects. And once it's solved, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus a clue token are created instead. So just to clear up some confusion I've seen, if you were to create a clue, you get two clues. <laughs> I've seen some people, for whatever reason, think that if you create a clue, this doesn't trigger, but it does. I don't know why, whatever, but it does. It gives you two clues, two clues. It gives you two clues. <laughs> if you would otherwise just get the one. But, I, you know, just the detective's card. It's a detective's card only, so it's really not worth too much. But I will give it a 2.25 because I think that in the detective deck and in like changeling decks, for that matter, in commander, I might have some work to do. This is a pretty sweet like solve state. A lot of the solve states are pretty desirable in this set. Case of the Ransack Lab is up next. Three mana, two and a blue instant spells and or instants and sorceries cost one less to cast for you. To solve it, you have to have cast four or more instants or sorceries this turn. And once it's solved, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, draw a card. Another commander looking card to me because casting four instants and sorceries in the same turn doesn't seem impossible, but it does seem like kind of harder than it seems like you're not going to do it until like turn five, <laughs> whatever in standard, I guess you could cast four one drops on turn four. If you hit all of your land drops and the rest of the cards in your hand are all instants and sorceries at all cost one. Like, do you see how this is a little hard to imagine? <laughs> you know, like every single card in your deck has to be one drop instants and sorceries. Um, and then four copies of case. And then you have to untap with case and play the turn after you skip your turn three. And then you have to sling four spells in a row. And then you have to survive another turn after this solves. And then you get to draw your cards. But you're still only casting one mana instants and sorceries. So it's like, eh, you know, I don't uh, you know. Maybe timeless because it gets to cast bolts and brainstorms and stuff. But, you know, for the most part, I'm not really seeing it too in too many constructed environments. So... I will say again, commander card that I'm going to give a two and a half because like the solve case is so 
butter nuts that you have to respect it at least a little bit. Case of the Shattered Pact is two mana. When an ETB is just, just two mana of any color. <laughs> when an ETB is, search your library for a basic, put it in your hand, shuffle. To solve it, there have to be five colors among permanents you control. Once it's solved, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains flying, double strike, and vigilance. Not choose one. It gets all three abilities till EOT. It's good. Um, I'm not sure what decks really want this, to be honest. There is the... Um, God, Kami Reborn or whatever, that like enchantment deck that may be into a card like this. Um, the Brilliant Restoration deck that plays Kami Reborn might be into a card like this a little bit. Um, and obviously there's a couple of other, you know, like Joda, but I don't think Joda wants this. I think Joda would rather just play a two-drop creature on turn two, mostly. But I will say in the Joda deck, <laughs> once this once this enters the solved state then you're winning the game if you have a Jota on the table. But you should just win a game once you play Jota anyway. So I don't think the deck really wants that. Um, there is also a new Ley Line that goes really well with this because if you get the new Ley Line, that's all colors, and you actually get to just throw it onto the table before you even start the game, then you play this on turn two, it automatically solves at the end of turn two. And that's great. Like I, That is fantastic, <laughs> you know. Um, but we've already seen play from things like Clay Fired Bricks and Ambitious Farmhand, you know, these things that for two mana, just go search a basic land, put it in your hand, and they're reasonably playable because they do other stuff. And this does uh, a lot of other stuff. Ambitious Farmhand is a body, whereas this isn't. But Ambitious Farmhand doesn't really flip over because of Coven very often. Like one every like 20 games that I've seen. And that's actually kind of being generous. This, you, you kind of build your deck around it. You want your land drops, right? Because you're playing like five drops, you know? In most decks that play this, <laughs> you're playing like four or five drops. Um, so you need your land drops, probably in mid range or ramp. And this solve state is just bonks, banana pudding, dude. So I actually really like this card, but again, it's very narrow because you know this this solves case, you know, the solve condition is a little narrow. So I can't really give it more than like a two point two five, but it's really close. Like this, I think this is close to a breakout, dude. It is an auto win in Jota, but again, I think just dropping Jota should be an auto win. I really do. Um, but Case of the Stash Skeleton is next. This is two mana, one in a black. When this case enters the battlefield, create a two one black skeleton creature token suspected. To solve, you control no suspected skeletons. Once it's solved, you can pay one in a black and sacrifice it. Search your library for a card, put it on the battlefield, shuffle, or put it in your hand. <laughs> that would be nuts. Put it, on, put it in your hand and shuffle. Activate as a sorcery, so you get a demonic tutor. Once this is solved, I think this card is very good. Uh, I've seen some sort of debate back and forth between the spikes on whether or not the card is actually good, but I think this card is uh, fantastic. I, I really think this card is special. Um, I am just not really going to beat around the bush too much here. I'm going to give this card, <coughs> excuse me, a little suspense there. I'm going to give this card a 3.25 <clears throat> and that'll speak for itself. I'm not really going to say too much more about it. I think this card is a little unbelievable. Like, yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now. I, I honestly think this card is a little, a little unbelievable. <laughs> Case of the Trampled Garden. If you wanted to hear me say more about that, I do have more to say about it just at a later date. I think this card is phenomenal this is three mana two and a green when this case enters the battlefield distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two creatures you control to solve creatures you control have power eight or greater total solved whenever you attack put a plus one plus one counter on attacking creature gains trample till end of turn trample is the key word on this card i mean it's literally a keyword ability but you get what i'm saying it's the critical word on this card i think it makes it halfway decent it does something when it etbs that's not bad i do think there's a case where if you don't Gotta stop using the word. There's a case where if you don't play a one drop, you just play a two drop, and then you play this on turn three and put all your eggs in the in the two drop basket, you can get blown out pretty easily and the card doesn't do much for too long. But it is great with like um the ancient one, the two drop eight eight, and then the next turn you just play this. <laughs> it seems okay, but I don't know if it's quite good enough. This is one of those other cases that seems commandery to me, but I'm gonna give it a 2.25. I think there's something there. Case of the Uneaten Feast, darling. This is a single white mana when an ETBs, or whenever a creature ETBs under your control, gain a life. To solve, you've gained five or more life this turn. Solved, sack this case. Creature cards in your graveyard gain. You may cast this card from your graveyard till end of turn. 
Nuts. Nuts. Macadamia nuts. This card's good. This, this card's really good, man. This card's really good. Um, I'm going to give this a 3.25 as well. I'm going to score it around the same as I scored the Demonic Tutor case. This is the Yogmas Will case. You guys aren't reading it right. Everyone's reading um, A Johnny's Welcome, which is good. A Johnny's Welcome is a good card, right? Soul Warden or Soul's Attendant, really, is a good card. Um, good. It's a good card. I like it, too. It's good. For one man, it's a good card. Um, what you're not reading, though, is that this is a Yogmas Will. It's <laughs> for creatures only, right? But, like, that's so good. <laughs> so good. I know Sunfall and Farewell. Blah, 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 blah. I, I know that there are cards in standard, but I also don't care. This card is just... I'm running out of words for better than good at this point. Um, Good Lord. <laughs> it's just, I'm really expecting good things out of this card. This card's very, very good. Um, 3.25. Caught red-handed is the uh, threatened effect, but it costs five mana. <laughs> it's five for an instant. It's an instant. It can't be countered. Gain control of a creature till end of turn. Untap the creature gains haste till end of turn suspected. So they made it not be able to be countered to get around ward so that it wouldn't be a million mana for the threatened effect. Problem is, it's still a million mana for the threatened effect. Why did you do that? <laughs> it's so silly. This could be four and probably still be fine. I do like that when you give it back, you can't block anymore. It's kind of cute. <laughs> You know, but I still don't think this should be five. It's fun to grab a creature at instant speed. That's nice, but I still don't, you know, and I guess you grab it. At, what is it? Does it work that way? If you grab it during your opponent's end step, do you get it for like an entire turn? Like you get to untap <laughs> your mana and still have the creature. Uh, maybe, but it's five minutes too much, dude. Five minutes way too much. So the red is good. Um, I basically always give these like a one and a half. And commander, so or commander, I give these like a one and a half and limited. So you know, it's playable. Yes, it does work that way. Okay, so that's better than I think. If you just snatch an opponent's creature EOT and get to untap your lands with the, their dude in play. That's okay, but it's still just kind of fine. It's just okay. Um, I'm sorry that this is. <laughs> can I? Oh, I can rotate it. Okay, so cease and desist is up next. Cease is two mana, one in Golgari hybrid for an instant. Exile up to two creature or two cards from a single graveyard. Target player gains two life, draws a card. Desist is six mana, four, and then two Selesnia hybrids for a sorcery. Destroy all artifacts and enchantment. Um, commander playable, but also like there's a world board standard playable. There, there really is, dude. There's an Abzan control deck like cooking up. It's in the cauldron. It's bubbling, dude. Like it's it's not bad. So I don't hate this. I'm gonna give it a two. Point seven five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just this the desist mode is so good. I think I've already made the jokes, all the jokes about this card I want to make for now. So. <laughs> so let's look at the actual function of the card in a vacuum. It's very good. Um cerebral confiscation is three mana sorcery. Choose one, mind rot or coercion. Opponent reveals their hand, choose a non land from it, they discard it. It's probably better than it looks, man. Seriously. This this is awfully tempting, but I'm not going to give it more than a, a two. Excuse me, by the way. Chalk outline. Everyone's talking about it. Four mana, three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a two, two white and blue detective creature token to investigate. Fine. I think it's fine. Four mana is a bit much. Four mana is so much, but that is literally the only downside of the card. You have to facilitate it a little bit. You got to facilitate it some. Um, so there is that, but... I still think it's a good card. So all in all, I'll give it a 2.75, which is probably higher than some would, would give it, and lower than others. I think some people really expect huge things out of this card. I expect a thing. <laughs> you know, like I expect it to be maybe sideboardable. Yeah, a couple people in chat, like that sucks. It's, it's not good. Oh, I just looked up the rules. It said you gain control till end of turn until somebody just said it doesn't work. So I don't know. Does it? Seems like it should. Three four, rule 314. It doesn't stay under your control. It lasts till cleanup step and you lose the card. You don't get it on your turn. Thank you, 2x Dre. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you to all the people in the comments section who are watching the YouTube version of this video and have already informed me that you don't get to keep the creature. <laughs> Thanks. I, we need people like you. You're very important to uh, us knowing how to play magic effectively. So, card is worse than I thought. The threat and effect. Chalk outline. 2.75. I'm going to stick with it. Clandestine Meddler, 3 mana for a Vampire Rogue. 3-2 when an ETB suspect a dude you don't control. And whenever one or more suspected creatures... Oh! 
I'm sorry, you suspect a guy you do control. Huh, I've been reading this wrong. Whenever one or more suspected creatures you control attacks, surveil one. Just cute, not that great, 1.5. Coerce to kill is five mana for an aura that enchants a creature. You control the enchanted creature. This time you do control the creature. <laughs> Says so right there. Enchanted creature has base power and toughness. 1-1 one, one has death touch as an assassin in addition to its other types. Very cute. I actually really like control magic, you know, mind control effects. I like them a lot. They're very rarely truly standard playable. And we already had um, some mind control effects that were better looking than this that saw no play in standard. So I really don't expect too much out of this um, at all. We actually have a decent one in standard right now. The analog to invoke despair in blue invoke the winds is just a better steal their dude spell than this sees no play. So won't see play, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for these kind of cards. And it's actually a really cute and you're like pioneer fin deck. That's soul tie for some reason. I'm just looking for a spot for it. I think it's a cute card. Um, I will give this a 1.75. This is very limited playable. Cold Case Cracker is 4 mana, 3 and a blue for a 3-3 three, three spirit detective with flying. When it dies, investigate. What do you give Strictly Better Phantom Monster? 1.5. <laughs> Commercial District. I've only got one of these um, surveil lands on the, like, in, you know, the, the file here. So... I guess I'm cheating. I'm not I'm not technically reviewing every single card in the set, but I will review one of these surveil lands. Which are surveil lands as a concept. And give these a solid three playable cards. Uh, they have, you know, land types so you can fetch them up with a variety of different fetch lands. And all that is really, really good. I think these are just better than scry lands. Period. You know, not only do they have the pertinent types, but surveil is just better than scry point blank period i think that it is just a better ability than scry um by not orders of magnitude but by some distance so i think this is at least a solid three basically all these lands now the gruel one might not see as much play because it's gruel they like to smash they want their lands coming to play on tap but just using it as an example some might be better than others whatever but you know, I, I still think these are basically a blanket three concealed weapon is two mana one and a red uh, for an artifact, it's an equipment. The equipped creature gets plus three, plus zero. You equip it for one and a red, but you can disguise it too. Disguises for two and a red. And when it's turned face up, you attach it to a creature you control. Cute little card, kind of a gimmick. Might be interesting in draft, but not more than a one and a half. Connecting the dots is two mana, one and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, exile the top card face down. You can pay two mana and discard your hand, sacrifice connecting to put all the cards exiled with connecting into their owner's hands. So a little win more it feels like in some situations, but obviously this is pretty decent red card draw. So I'll give this card a 2.75. That gives me room to be right and wrong. <laughs> the card could be good, could be bad. Um, but 2.75 is a pretty strong rating, all things considered. So I expect the card to be at the very least commander playable, but it could end up doing some things in standard. I really do think that if not a mono red deck, a big red deck might want access to a refill like this. And a refill that's effectively, you know, like four cards later in the game is halfway decent. Conspiracy Unraveler is 7 mana for a 6-6 six, six Sphinx Detective with Flying. You may collect evidence 10 rather than pay the mana spells or cost for spells you cast. I can't give this more than like a two and a half, but there is an incredibly high ceiling on this card. In standard right now, not only can you just play four copies of this and kind of, you know, Conspiracy Unraveler into a Conspiracy Unraveler by getting rid of a Conspiracy Unraveler in your yard, but you can do that trick with a bunch of cards. If you have an Unraveler in play through, due to a reanimation spell, you can get the immediate value of playing a Portal to Phyrexia or the Omniscience analog that's currently in standard. If there's something that's like an Omniscience. Um, there's a bunch of like really expensive cards in standard right now that you can land the turn you play this, and I feel like it's probably worth it, but... You know, if you're just going to play this and then use it to play free Itali, shouldn't you have just played the Itali or the Atraxa in the first place and just put a better card than this in your deck? That's the real question. So I think two and a half is the highest I can really go on this. Convenient target is next. A single red for an aura that enchants a creature. When it ETBs, suspect enchanted creature. Enchanted creature also gets plus one, plus one. And for three mana, you can return this aura from your graveyard to your hand. Not actually a terrible package when you think about it. I think we have better things in standard that are 
that a mono red mage would play in place of this. You know, like I don't think it's taking the place of monstrous rage anytime soon. And I don't think it's being played alongside monstrous rage anytime soon. That said, I wouldn't actually be super shocked to see like a one of this card, like a silver bullet, this card turn up in the odd list from time to time. I don't think it's actually bad. So I'll just give it a two. It's not good, but I also don't think it's bad. Like menace and plus one plus one and, you know, rancor ability to a degree. That's fine. Cornered Crook is 5 mana for a 5-4 by Ashino Warrior. When it ETBs, you can sack an artifact. When you do, this guy deals 3 damage to any target. Extremely limited playable guy, but nowhere outside of that. 1.75. Coveted Falcon is 3 mana. 1 and 2 blue for a 1-4 artifact bird with flying. When it attacks, you get to gain control of stuff you, you own but you don't have right now. <laughs> and you can disguise it for 2 mana. When you turn it face up, an opponent gains control of any number of target permanents you control. Draw a card for each one they gain control of this way. So kind of a roundabout donate effect in standard. And there are some fun things you can do with it, but I don't think there's anything broken you can do with it in too many formats right now. And in the formats where it would be broken, just play donate, you know? So I just <laughs> probably just give this like a two, something like that. Crime Novelist is three mana. It's a 1-3 Goblin Bard. Whenever you sack an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on Novelist. Add red. Last man, add red is really, really powerful. <laughs> That's so good. This is at least going to pay you back for sacking your maps and your, your blood tokens and everything that costs one. Uh, that seems good. So, um, and obviously treasures, it's two mana. This guy looks really good, but there is a relatively high startup cost for what he actually does. So, I don't have a lot of doubts about the card, but... I will say, I don't think he's like as busted as I've seen some people claim he might be, but I do think he's a really good uncommon, so I'm going to give him a solid three. I think he's that good. Crime Stopper Sprite is three mana for a 2-2 Fairy D tech, and when there's an additional cost to cast this spell, you may collect evidence six. It has flying, and when it ETBs, tap a creature. If you have if you collected evidence, you put a stun counter on the creature. Limited playable wind drake kind of thing. Let's give it a 1.75. Crowd Control Warden is 5 mana for a 4-4 Centaur Soldier when it ETBs or is turned face up. It gets plus X or one, X plus 1 plus 1 counters. <laughs> this is hard, baby. Where X is the number of um, other creatures you control, you can disguise it for 5 mana too. This is probably a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight. <laughs> some of the time, but still not great. 1.75. Decent limited. Cryptex is 2 mana for an artifact. It's really hard to score this card. You can tap it and collect evidence 3 to add a mana of any color. Put an unlock counter on the Cryptex. Sacrifice the Cryptex to surveil 3 and then draw 3. Activate it only if Cryptex has 5 or more unlock counters on it. That's a lot of evidence you have had to collect and a lot of turns you've had to have the card out at that point. I think, though, that a 2 mana rock in standard that's actually probably a little easier to activate than you think is probably okay, but just okay. You know, I think most of the time I'd rather just play Iron Crag or Iron Crag and not have the headache of trying to make this work and blah, blah, blah. But the decks that can draw the cards off of it, probably really happy they played this card, but I don't think you played too many of it or anything. I'm just going to give this like a 2.5. I think it's in that range where there's a, there's a world where this is a two mana rock that consistently ramps you. And then later in the game, casts Ancestral Recall for free. But plus upside, Surveil 3, upside on your Ancestral Recall. So like maybe, but I'm, I'm really just putting it in the probably not basket for now. So two and a half. Cryptic Code is three mana, two and a blue for an artifact, which is an equipment. When it ETBs, cloak the top card of your library and attach this card to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, can't be blocked. Pay two mana to return code to its hand. It's all right. It was on the sleepers list, um, and I think there might be something to this card. Maybe, but all things considered, end of the day, dust settles, smoke clears. I think this is probably closer to a solid two. Culvert Ambusher is 5 mana for a 4-5 Worm Horror when it ETBs or its turn face up. Target creature blocks this turn of Abel, and it has Disguise 4 and a green. Eh. <laughs> Decent. 1.5 for limited. Curious Cadaver. 4 mana, 2, a black, and a blue for a 3-1 Zombie D-Tech with flying. When you sack a clue, return Curious Cadaver from your graveyard to your hand. Really, really good, I think, in limited for that sort of, again, incremental value you're going to be looking for. And it's good that it comes on a flyer. It can block, too. That's cool. So, all around decent there. I'll give it a 1.75. Curious Inquiry. Here is a single blue for an R that enchants a creature. The creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and has, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player investigate womp womp just much worse than most curiosity effects 
right. Um, imagine if Curiosity said, Enchanted Creature has. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. That's a way worse card, right? You know? It's not exactly what this says, but it's close. But this does put artifacts into play. Puts clues into play for clue decks. There's cards, there's decks that might want it. So I'm going to give it a solid two and leave it at that. Deadly Complication is three mana. One, a black and a red for a sorcery. Choose one or both. Destroy target creature. And or put a plus one, plus one counter on a suspected dude you control. And you can unsuspect it if you want to. It's fine. I don't love the sorcery speed on this. But just the fact that it's a removal spell with upside like this. I guess I'll give it a solid two. Deadly Cover Up is five mana. Ooh, three and two black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, you can collect evidence six. Destroy all creatures. If evidence was collected, exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. Then search its owner's graveyard hand library for any number of cards with the same name and exile them. Then that player shuffles, draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So I wish we could abbreviate that last ability. A lot of black cards have done it over the years, and I just want to... T-S-I-O-G-H-A-L. It's <laughs> make an acronym out of it somehow. Also, the card has really, really rad art. But aside from all that, I'm just going to give this like a, a 2.75. Um, I think this is a phenomenal magic card. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a sweeper for five mana that says destroy all creatures. And you can't score that too highly. Those are relatively common. But we don't see unconditional sweepers in black every day. This is a damnation that costs one more um, with upside. So... And the upside is very good, by the way. <laughs> really, really good. So, also note that you don't have to hit a creature with the with the this mode on the card, the Jester's Cap mode on the card. You don't have to uh, hit a creature with it. It's just any old card from the graveyard, which is very cool. I expect this card to see a lot of play. So let's actually give it a three. Sure, I think I gave Sunfall a three and a half. Let's give this a three. <laughs> Deduce. Thanks, Shane's birthday tweet for the two years. Happy birthday. Happy stream birthday to Shane. 24 months is a really long time. Deduce is two mana, one in the blue for an instant. Draw a card, investigate. Solid card. Solid little card. Technically better than think twice in a number of ways. Right? So, kind of interesting, man. I have to score this somewhat highly. I'll give it a 2.25. Um... Nice little utility card. I actually don't hate this at all. <laughs> like, at all, dude. I think it's a fine card. Um, can I actually give that a 2.5? 2.25. Defenestrated Phantom is 6 mana for a 4-3 Flying Spirit with Disguise 5. Bad card, uh, 1.25. Uh, Delny Streetwise. Look out, ladies and gentlemen. is 3 mana for a 2-2 Legendary Human Scout. Creatures you control with power 2 or less can't be blocked by creatures power 3 or greater. If an ability of a creature you control power 2 or less triggers, that ability triggers an extra time. So, wow, just slapping panharmonica on, on everything now. We're having a panharmonica convention lately. You could probably do that now. You probably play a commander deck with like six different panharmonica on effects in it. <laughs> you know, um, good work. But this is a good card. To some people's mind, this is the best card in the set. I am definitely not going to go that far. I will give this card a solid three. That's a very good score. Um, we'll give it a three and a quarter. I'll bump this up to a three and a quarter, but it is not the four that I've seen some people kind of call it. But, you know, we'll give her a quarter of a point for wearing the Aladdin outfit. I'm sure. Um, let's, let's, I, I think that she's worth that, though. I think 3.25 is probably about right. This is a really good card. Demand Answers is two mana. One in a red for an instant. As an additional cost to cast it, sack an artifact or discard a card. Draw two cards. Phenomenal. Wonderful card. Absolutely beautiful card. Sack an artifact, draw two for two mana to instant speed. At instant speed? Two mana? Yes, absolutely. Balls out. Wonderful, amazing card. 2.75. I'm so 100% serious. Could even be a three. This is a great. This Look out for this. This is a good card. Sack an artifact, discard a card. I know. It's, 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 it's like the black card that I said wasn't very good. Um... But this is red, and that's different. Note how the colors are different. And I actually think that even though black is my favorite color in Magic, and I've, you'll catch me playing a deck with swamps in it basically any time I'm playing Magic, um, I do think that different colors need different things and have different things, and this, for all intents and purposes, is probably a great card to exist for a red deck. Um, also, what is it? Reckoner's Bargain is the card I'm talking about in black. That was, um, I believe, Sack an Artifact or Sack a Creature. Uh, sack an artifact or discard a card is a much better card, much better card than than sack an artifact or, or sack a creature. So I can freak out about it. This card is wonderful, 
And I don't think that anyone's really talking about it. I maybe should have put it in the sleepers video, but it's actually in my top 50 list because I think it's that good. This card's a solid three. Easy. But Detective Satchel is up next. Four mana, two, a red and a blue for an artifact. When it ETBs, investigate twice. Tap it, create a 1-1 one, one Thopter. Activate only if you sacked an artifact this turn. Does it go in Anvil? No. I Probably, no, I don't, you know. But it is three artifacts on the table all at once. And technically, it replaces itself twice once you do play it. So there's a lot of cool things about this. I, I feel a similar way about this as, as I felt about um, Tinker's Tote in the last set. Really, really cool. Board in a box. Does a lot of great stuff. Probably won't actually play it too much. I'll just give this a two, mostly because I think it's great. <laughs> in, a, in a cool way. I think it's cool. I don't think it's great. As in, it's going to break standard. Four mana is just too much. Dog Walker. Dog Walker is a red and a white for a 3-1 human citizen with vigilance and disguise. Two Boris hybrids. When it's turned face up, create two tap one one white dog creature tokens. That's actually not the worst card in the world, but I still can't give it more than a 1.75. Doorkeeper Thrall is a Hushbringer. It's two mana, one and a white for a 1-2 Thrall with flash and flying. Artifacts and creatures ETBing don't cause abilities to trigger. Yay! You either love it or you hate it. You either think it's a card jerks play or you think it's a card jerks hate. <laughs> There's really no in-between on this one. Um, so I have to give this like a 2.75 playable card, especially in boards. Doppelgang up next. Triple X, uh, Vin Diesel in uh, blue green for a sorcery. For each of X target permanents, create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. This works slightly differently than I thought that it did at first. It actually does more than I thought that it did when I first previewed it. But I don't know if anybody actually caught on to that. For each of up to X, for each of X target permanents, create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. So... If you you'll target four permanents and then like let's say if I have all the mana in the world, I target four permanents and then I get four tokens each of those permanents. So is am I getting that right? So if I if I target let's say I target three guys. Let's do that. Let's say I target three guys with this spell. I get three copies a piece of each guy that I targeted. That's good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's extremely mana intensive. And I don't think that it sees play in standard. But that's good. But yeah, 11 mana is too much for that. That's too much for that. But if you do pump 11 mana into this, I'm pretty sure you get nine dudes. <laughs> which is like pretty nuts, you know. If you pump um eight mana into this, I'm pretty sure you get four guys. Which is great. So, yeah, in, in standard, or this probably doesn't see a whole lot of play, but in commander, it's probably like a massive Simic finisher for the rest of the time. The rest of the time. <laughs> but for the rest of the time, I think Simic decks probably want to make a bunch of mana, and most Simic decks do. I will also say that you make infinite mana in standard with the Cauldron deck, so maybe this, but I doubt it. And I probably just want to end the game instead, you know. So, really interesting card, but I can't really score it as more than like a 2.5. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff to do in commander, though. It really does. But Drag the Canal is next. Uh, Demir Colors, blue and black for an instant. Create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. If a creature died this turn, you also gain two life, surveil two, and investigate. That's a lot <laughs> for just two mana, and it's not too hard for a creature to die. A creature's a die in combat. You can kill one with a removal spell. You can cut a creature down, then cast this on the same turn for just three mana, um, which does seem like a relatively big gain for Demir like, control decks. But at the same time, I don't really see this like earning its spot too often. I might be wrong. It's an awful lot of value. But I can't really give this more than like a 2.25. But I really... I, this is one of those cards I'm like really willing to be wrong. This could be a 2.75. And I could be way off. You know, it's an instant speed body for just a couple of mana. And that's like a decent floor. Like already, you know. And if you are able to get the value, it's probably... Pretty Ds, right? More than Pretty Ds. But I just have a feeling that this card is actually not that great. I just have a feeling. And I hate to go off feelings. I'd rather use, you know, actual facts and data and stuff. But I just, in this, in the, in the case of this card, I just don't think that in two weeks it's going to be in, like, every deck in the top eight. I just, you know, which is not really the criteria anyone has for success. But I just don't see this being, like, amazing. But... For the two mana you're putting into it, yeah, if it pops off, it's it's a lot of value. It is so much value. But I'm just not, I'm just really, I'm not seeing it being that playable. So I'm just giving it a 2.25 for now. But again, again, it's definitely got a lot of room to grow. And if it does, I'll be happy for it. Dramatic Accusation is three mana. 
It's an R that enchants a creature. When an ETBs, tap an enchanted creature. Um, enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. But with this one, you can pay two blue mana to shuffle the creature into its owner's library. So, Rebluval. Tried and true actual Rebluval on one of these three mana, like, tap a guy down forever spells. It's pretty cool. I'm going to give this a 2.25. It's not bad. It's not bad. Due Diligence is up next. Three mana, two, and a white for an aura that enchants a creature. When an ETB is a creature you control other than enchanted creature, gets plus two, plus two, gains vigilance till end of turn. Enchanted creature has plus two, plus two, and vigilance. Not a good card. Just not. I'll give this a 1.25. And for the time being, I'll go back to Drag the Canal, and I will say this about this card. If, if <laughs> you can say your opponent declares combat. I'm going to combat. All right. Cut down that guy. Cut down that guy. Okay. Okay, cool. You cut down that guy. All right, I'll turn my guy sideways now. All right, cool. I'll cast Drag the Canal. I'll block that dude. And I'll also surveil to, gain to, and investigate. All right. So, that seems good. You removed a guy that turn. You blocked another guy and perhaps removed that guy. And then you gain two life, surveil to, and investigate. This didn't actually, though, this didn't actually create any real card advantage for you. As a control player... This doesn't create any real card advantage aside from the investigate, and even that you have to pump more mana into. So you kind of have to look at this. If you want to draw a card, now this spell costs four mana, and you have to enable it. So, like, again, I really want to like this spell, like, an awful lot. I really do. And I do think it is, like, worth looking at in control, don't get me wrong. But if you're playing four copies of this in, in control, that's opportunity cost. You know, you only get 60 slots, and your control deck has to be pretty tight nowadays. So... I don't know how many how many copies you play. I'm just I'm interested. You can tell I'm very interested in this card and how it does, but I'm a little reticent to give it more than that 2.25. I'd like to, I'd like to, but I'm I'm reticent. I see a couple of people in chat who are like, eh, you know, but again, it doesn't actually create real card advantage. It bugs me. Um, it looks it's one of those cards that looks like it does. Like, look, I do so much, but it doesn't actually. <laughs> when you think about it, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, the Surveil is almost worth a card, but it's not literally worth a card. It's not literally worth a card. It bugs me. Investigate is almost worth a card, but it's not literally worth a card. Just, ugh. I don't know. I want to like it. I'm sorry for not liking it as much as some people here. <laughs> Eliminate the impossible. It's two mana, one and a blue for an instant. Investigate. Creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus zero till end of turn. If any of them are suspected, they aren't suspected anymore. So you can ease, more easily block them with their menace. Um, not great. It is kind of a pseudo fog effect. Might blow your opponent out and you get some of a card off of it with the investigate. You know, it's not bad. So I'll give this a 1.5. It's bad. <laughs> Contradict myself. I think there's some limited decks that might want a copy of this card, but I don't think it goes any farther than that. Escape tunnel is a land. You can tap it and uh, sacrifice it to Terramorphic Expanse, to Evolving Wilds. And you can also tap it to have a creature with power two or less go unblockable this turn good card <laughs> it's like what would i score in evolving wilds what would i score in evolving wilds a 2.75 a three is evolving wilds a three am i am i way off base in calling evolving wilds a three chat <laughs> am i it's like i don't think i don't know that it quite is evolving wilds is probably classic case of like 2.5 2.75 but i'm gonna give this a 2.75 you know i'll give this a, it was almost a three this card is almost a three like, this card will see some play. Not a whole lot of standard play. I'm not saying that, but what if it does? No, but seriously, their commander players might like this forever. Just a strictly better Evolving Wilds is a really good card. So, yeah, like two and a half, two point seven five, like territory, you know? Yeah, a lot of chats are saying anywhere in the neighborhood of two and a half. Two and a half is probably close. It's probably about right. Essence of Antiquity is five mana for a 110 Golem with Disguise 3. Uh, two and a white. And when it's turned face up, creatures you control gain hexproof till in a turn, untap them. Not playable and standard. It's way too much setup for your counter or removal spell guy. And he's a 110. <laughs> I guess he works with like toughness matters stuff. So maybe Arcades Sabbath or whatever, but or Arcades the strategist. But now we're, we're just going off the rails. Like one commander deck that's not even like super competitive. Although any Arcades players would probably buck their chest up at me for that. Would you say? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I just got to give this card like a one and a half. Etrata, Deadly Fugitive. 
Three mana, one a blue and a black for a 1-4 legendary vamp assassin with DT. Face down creatures you control have pay four mana and turn it face up if you can't exile it and then cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. Whenever an assassin you control does combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. So the four mana is basically, um, I, I like the way you can play this ability because obviously you can just pay the four mana to turn a creature face up because it's a creature. But if you get something like really juicy off your opponent's library, you know, then you can always just cast it for four mana regardless of whatever its mana cost is. And there's some good targets for that. You can also do that in your own deck. I'm just throwing that out there. You can cloak cards from your own library with like Cryptic Coat or whatever or other cloaky cards. Um, uh, you know, cloak like a, a Phyrexian portal you know? <laughs> and, then, and then play it for four mana with a Trata. That's probably the jankiest way you can use this card, but it is a, a mode that exists. Either way, I've talked too long about this. This card is extremely narrow and like maybe some assassin lovers in, in Commander might play it, but all things considered, I have to give this like a two. <laughs> 2.25. I'll give it a 2.25. Evidence Examiner is a green and a blue for a 2-2 Merfolk Detective. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you can collect evidence for, and whenever you collect evidence, investigate. Two and a half. Solid two and a half, dude. I really like this a good bit. It's a little parasitic to its own set's mechanics. It's very parasitic to its own set's mechanics, but it's very strong within its own, you know, using those mechanics. So I'll give it a two and a half. Exit Specialist is two mana, one on a blue for a 2-1 Human Detective. Exit Specialist can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. Disguise, one on a blue. When it's turned face up, return another target creature to its owner's hand. This is, I could honestly make a whole other list of cards that almost made the sleepers list. And this is right there, dude. I don't think you want to play this in standard. I really don't. But I do think there are some people that could argue a case for it and do so almost successfully. So I'll give this a 1.75. Exp expedited inheritance is two mana, two red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature is dealt damage, its controller may exile that many cards from the top of their library. They may play those cards until the end of their next turn. The symmetrical effects a little bit hard to actually break, to be honest. So, I do think it's powerful though. I'm gonna give this card a 2.75, um, which is a little higher than I want to go, to be honest. But I think 2.75 is mostly correct. I think when you do break the symmetry, it's gonna be incredible. So, well, really no, deny, no denying it's a good card, but time will tell if it's a bulk mythic or actually playable. But I lean towards actually playable on this, just not in all the red decks, but Big Red sure did get a lot of pieces. Big Red really did get a lot of pieces, but I will say breaking the symmetry does break the card in a lot of ways, but you're red. You're the one dealing the damage, so... I think your opponent's more likely to get cards off of this, and I don't know how I feel about it. 2.75 is kind of a, a benefit of the doubt kind of score for a card like this because the effect is obviously very powerful, but I've got a lot of doubts with this. Expose the Culprit is up next. Two mana, one and a red for an instant. Choose one or both. Turn target face down, creature face up, or exile any number and or exile any number of face up creatures you control with disguise and a face down pile. Shuffle the pile. Cloak them. It's cute. It's a 1.25. It's not great. Extract a... Con we'll give it a 1. That card's a 1. Extract a Confession is 2 mana, 1 and a black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you can collect Evidence 6. Each opponent sacks a creature. If evidence was collected, instead, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. Actually, okay. Actually, okay. Just a decent edict effect at sorcery speed, which is kind of booty, right? But... Still, collecting evidence six is harder than it sounds, but once you do, this becomes a much, much, much better card at a relatively low rate. So I'm going to give this a 2.25, you know, and again, it could be a 2.5, but I don't really judge even the best removal spells that high. We, again, 3.25 on Assassin's Trophy, but that is literally the best of removal spells. And I'm just not really feeling that this is anywhere close. Um, Ezrim Agency Chief, 5 mana, 1, 2 white, 2 blue for a 5-5 five, five legendary Archon Detective with flying when an ETBs investigate twice. Pay 1, sack an artifact, and it gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Hexproof till end of turn. So don't kid yourself, this card actually costs 6 mana to play. Don't play this card for 5 mana, it costs 6. Always leave one open to sack an artifact, give it Hexproof. Um, I think this card is great, but I am judging it through a boomer lens of like what good control finishers used to look like. And I don't think they look the same way anymore. And um, so I have to actually dock this slightly. 
in terms of, you know, realism and objectivity points, I need to take a quarter point off of this. So I will give this a three. Solid three for easy E over here. Fey Flight is one and a blue for an aura. It's flash enchantment that enchants a creature. When an ETB is enchanted creature gains hexproof till end of turn, it also gets plus one plus zero and has flying. I think this is a little bit better than it looks, you know? I still can't stop thinking about putting this on like a Talarian Terror or something. Um, especially considering like if they're trying to target it, they paid the ward for it. And then you get to do this and they're just like, damn it. <laughs> so now I'm flying in for six every turn, kid would do some. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't hate this card at all. I think that most of your blue, you know, counter or removal spell things need to be one mana. And so this is more or less priced out of standard playability. But gosh, is it close, man. So I'll give this a 2.25. We are almost there with this thing, man. Fairy Snoop is one, a blue and a black for a 1-4 fairy detective with flying in disguise. One and then two Demir hybrids. When it's turn face up, look at the top two of your library. Put one in your hand, other into your graveyard. Pretty good and limited. Stops there. 1.75. Fanatical Strength is two mana. One and a green for an instant. A creature gets plus three, plus three. And Trample till end of turn. Trample is always better than you think, but I'm just going to give this a 1.25. Thelonious Rage is a single red mana for an instant. A dude you control gets plus two, plus oh. Gains haste till end of turn. When it dies, create a 2-2 two, two white and blue detective creature token. Man. Not going to replace Monstrous Rage, buddy, but... Okay, you know? Like, I... Be better, I think, in a lot of ways if it gave haste and trample or just trample. Because um, then you'd be guaranteed to get some damage in and you get your guy. Oh, God, that'd be sick. But I just, I don't know, dude. I like this a little bit. It, it's kind of like, um, you know, like there are black spells that like this, that are like this, um, where it kind of returns the creature to you to play after it dies or like something happens after the creature dies. It comes into play tapped or whatever. And this doesn't do that, but it does leave a body on the table when your guy dies. I just, I like this a little bit. I'll give it a solid two, but I just think it's, it's kind of boxed out of standard where there's no deck that really needs it or anything. But I think that basically a Samet sprint, um, that gives you a body sometimes is okay, man. That's, that's pretty okay. But Fester Leech is a single black mana for a zombie leech. It's a one, one when it deals combat damage to a player, you mill two cards. For one and a black, it can get plus two, plus two till end of turn, but you can only do that once per turn for whatever reason, <laughs> you know. Um, I guess I don't want you to pump it too much, uh, but yeah, it's okay. Again, I, I don't think it's great or anything, and I'm not going to give it more than a 1.75, but there are actual constructed standard decks. I will play this in for two days and then cut the card, but we'll, we'll try it in stick fingers. <laughs> we will. Um, up next is Flotsam and Jetsam. Flotsam is one and a Simic hybrid for an instant. Mill three, investigate. Jetsam is four and two Demir hybrids for a sorcery. Each opponent mills three. Then you may cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard without paying the mana cost. If a spell cast this way, it would be put into a graveyard exile instead. Um, this card's a little sleepy to me, man. This is yet another card that almost made the sleepers list. I just think Jetsam is a really tempting card. But that's the that's the operative word there, tempting. I don't know that it's actually good and everybody thinks it's bad and you guys are dumb and you don't know how to evaluate cards. This is a good card. I'm not saying that at all. I think it's tempting to think this is a good card. But is it actually? I don't know. You know, instant speed mill three investigate is something. That's better than nothing. And then the other half of it, again, could just blow your opponent all the way out. Uh, but it does count on what your opponent's doing, and not every card like that is going to be great. So I'm just going to give this a 2.25, and we'll leave it at that. Flourishing Bloomkin. Two mana for a 0-0 zero, zero plant elemental that gets a plus one, plus one for each forest you control. You can also disguise it for five, and when you do turn it face up, you cast a Cultivate that only gets forests. Search your library for two forests, reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped, other in your hand shuffle. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but People of the Woods that's easier to cast and has upside is a good magic card. Sorry for thinking that, but I think that this is a good card. 2.75. Pretty easy, man. Forensic Gadgeteer is three mana, two and a green for a 2-3 Vidalcan Artificer Detective. And whenever you cast an artifact spell, you investigate. Activated abilities of artifacts you control cost one less to activate, but you can't go lower than one mana with that ability. Still a good card. A um, lot of mana to get on the table in a constructed environment, but... And, and it's only three, but that's a lot. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, skipping your turn three to play this thing is one thing. You can also play it on four um, and then cast an artifact to get some free value off of it. But then you play a two, three on turn four in standard. 
and your opponent's just going to knock your freaking teeth in half the time after you do that. So I'm just, I don't know, man. I, I want to like this an awful lot. Very obviously a commanderific kind of card, but I want to be a believer in constructed environments for this. There's just so much value incredible amount of value on this and cost reduction. And when you get value, not just regular value, value in the form of potential drawn cards, value in the form of drawn cards and cost reduction, I really want to like this card an awful lot because those are two of the best things you can do in Magic. So I'm going to give this a three, right? But I'm, I'm aware that I'm potentially overrating it, right? It could be less than that. But when you just look at the text box of this card, and when you know that it doesn't cost five mana, starts to get starts to be a pretty attractive card. Um, also, she's a pretty lady. But Forensic Researcher is up next. Three mana. Two and a blue for a 1-3 Merfolk Detective. You can tap it and untap a permanent you control. Another permanent. You can also tap it, collect evidence. Three, two, tap a creature you don't control. So... I should at least let you know this has an infinite combo. If you get two of these out, you can just tap and untap them forever. And because they're merfolk, they trigger, what is it, Deep Root Waters or whatever it's called? Deep Root something uh, from LCI. It's basically whenever a merfolk you control becomes tapped, you get a 1-1 one, one merfolk. So, you know, you use a forensic researcher to untap a forensic researcher, and then you get a merfolk, and you use the a forensic researcher you just untapped to untap the forensic researcher that untapped it in the first place, and you get a merfolk, and you just repeat this loop forever. Uh, and that's an infinite combo in standard, but it's, you know, eight, eight total mana. It's incredibly slow. It can be very, very interacted with, you know. So, eh, eh, it's, it's not a great combo, but I, again, I should make you aware of it. Altogether, the, the card's a one and a half. Forum Familiar is a white mana for a 1-1 one, one cat with disguise, one and a white. When Familiar is turned face up, return another target permanent you control to its owner's hand, put a plus one, plus one counter on Familiar. Neat little shepherd kind of, you know, white save a guy's effect, a white main lion kind of deal on this. Uh, and I do kind of like it. I also like that it says a permanent. Permanent's a really interesting word on this card as well, but I really can't give this more than like a solid two. And that's only assuming it might have something to do, but I don't know that it actually does. It's also a cat. That probably gets an extra quarter point around here, right? Frantic scapegoat, baby. A single red mana for a 1-1 goat with haste. When an ETB is suspected. Whenever one or more other creatures ETB under your control, if scapegoat is suspected, you may suspect one of the other creatures. If you do, scapegoat isn't suspected anymore. Um, two and a half. Two and a half. Seriously. I really, I've said it before, but I expect something. From this guy. Um, even if we have to wait until Monastery Swift Spear and Kumana faces Kakazan rotate, there's we might get some work out of this dude. And yes, the art is incredible. <laughs> the art is so incredible. Um, I love it. <laughs> Fugitive Codebreaker is here. This is two mana, one in a red for a 2 1 goblin rogue with prowess and haste. Disguise, five in a red, but the cost is reduced by one for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. When Fugitive Codebreaker is turned face up, discard your hand o, then draw three cards. Probably okay, but only okay. I've seen a lot of people say this card is just unbelievably good. I don't think so. I think there's a world where you can flip it over for a single red mana relatively easily, but even then, you had to pay three mana to get it down in the first place, you know? So, I just, I'm not sure that I love it, but I will give it a solid 2.5, which is, again, not the worst grade ever. <laughs> Furtive Courier is three mana, two and a blue for a 3-2 Merfolk Advisor that can't be blocked as long as you've sacked an artifact this turn. Whenever it attacks, draw a card, discard a card. Okay, I, I don't hate this. <laughs> I like stuff that can't be blocked. I like looting when I attack, so I'll just give it a two. But that's a very generous two. This is much closer to a one and a one point seven five. But let's look at fuss, fuss and bother of next. Fuss is two and Boros for an instant. It's a Boros hybrid. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. Bother is four and Azorius hybrids times two for a sorcery. Create three Thopters and surveil two. Uh, this is one of the split cards I'm least excited about, although I think Fuss, you can make a case for Fuss at instant speed, right? The counters for the, okay, you know. Um, also love that you can play it in mono red. <laughs> you can play it in mono white. You can play this whole ass card in mono white, so it's something, I guess, but still, I can't, I'm not going to give this more than a two, um, and that it really 
probably doesn't quite deserve that. <laughs> Gadget Technician is up next. Four mana, two, a red and a blue for a 3-2 Goblin Artificer. When an ETB's aura is turned face up, you get a, a Thopter. You can disguise it for just two Is It Hybrids, which is a relatively low cost, but still not amazing. 1.75. Galvanize is two mana, one and a red for an instant that deals three damage to a creature. If you've drawn two or more cards this turn, it deals five damage to that creature instead. Now we're starting to talk, but not the best removal spell in the world, right? Two 2.25 that said this feels like the kind of thing that would normally they have made it a sorcery right but the fact that they made it instant speed i'll give it a quarter of a point gear bane orangutan this is three mana two and a red for a two two ape with reach when it etbs destroy up to one target artifact or sacrifice an artifact if you do this guy gets two plus one plus one counters so a three mana four four reach or uh just a regular old utabi orangutan in red so i can't score that too low two point five yeah <laughs> 2.75 yeah 2.75 I, I just yeah it's got the sneaky reach and everything yeah absolutely i would give utabi orangutan a 2.5 so i have to give this a two and three quarters uh get a leg up as a single green for an instant strictly better might of the masses here uh, your guy gets plus one plus one till end of turn for each creature you control but also gets reach in case you wanted to use the card defensively which is really interesting so I'll give this a two. Gleaming Gear Drake, baby, is a blue and a red for a 1-1 artifact creature. It's Drake with flying. When it ETBs, you investigate. Whenever you sack an artifact, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. This card is a three. The card's a three. Do I stick to that? Am I sticking to my guns on that? <laughs> yeah, dude. This card's a three. 100%. This card's very good. I promise you. Um, up next is Glint Weaver, seven mana, five and two green for a three, three Spider over with a speed with reach. When an ETB is distribute three plus one, plus one counters among one, two or three target creatures and then gain life equal to the greatest toughness among other creatures you control. Really, it's just creatures you control. It's not other at all. So you can gain six off of this seven mana, six, six reach, or you can spread the love. So that's fine. Um, but it's not amazing. <laughs> 1.5 Goblin Mask Maker. A single red mana for a 1-2 Gobbo Citizen. Whenever Goblin Mass Maker attacks, face down spells you cast this turn cost one less to cast. Relevant and limited. Relevant if you want to do disguise stuff in standard, but I'm not giving it more than a 2. Granite Witness is 4 mana. 2, a white and a blue for a 3-2 artifact creature. It's a Gargoyle D-Tech with Flying and Vigilance. You can tell it's a detective because it has a hat. It disguises for 2 Azorius Hybrids. And when it's turned face up, you may tap or untap target creature. Chaffee, not really great, especially for the 4 mana cost and limited. Um, 5 mana if you want to disguise it and then flip it up, right? So, whatevs, man. 1.5. Gravestone Strider, two mana for a 1-3 Golem artifact creature. Pay a 1 to filter a mana of any color, but only once a turn. You can pay 2 and exile it from your yard to exile a card from a graveyard. Neat, but only neat. Probably sees really not a whole lot of play just about anywhere. <laughs> so, not too sure about this. 1.25. Green Belt Radical. It is a very cool looking card. But Radical is 4 mana, 3 and a uh, green for a 4-4 four, four Centaur Citizen with Disguise 7 mana. When it's turned face up, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain Trample till end of turn. So, kind of an overrun effect that you can sort of do as an ambush, which is why it costs so much. Because usually you don't get to ambush or an overrun effect, you know. Massive blowouts occasionally possible when you do turn this up, but... 1.75. Griffnot Tracker, 4 mana for a 3-2 human detective with flying when it ETBs exile 2 cards from a graveyard. 1.25. Um, Hazda Vigilante, 5 mana for a 4-4 giant soldier when it ETBs or attacks, but a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature you control with power 4 or less. 1.25. Hard Hitting Question is a green mana for a sorcery. A creature you control deals damage equal to its power to a creature or a planeswalker you do not control. Getting better, right? I'll give this a solid 2.25, which seems a little high, but it's basically the best prey upon we've ever seen outside of maybe Blizzard Brawl. And wouldn't you give Blizzard Brawl a 2.5? Knowing what you know now. So I'll give this at least a two and a quarter. It's pretty good. Harry Dronesmith is four mana for a 2-3 human artificer. You get a Thopter every turn. 
uh, at the beginning of combat, but you have to sacrifice it at your instep. It's okay, but not great. 1.5. Hedge Maze. Wait, this is another one of the Surveil Lands. Nice, free card. Hedge Whisperer is a single green mana for a 0-3 Elf Druid Detective. You may choose not to untap Hedge Whisperer during your untap step. You can pay four. That's three and a green. Tap it, collect evidence four. A land you control becomes a 5-5 five, five green plant more creature token with haste. <laughs> creature, just not token, with haste for as long as Hedge Whisperer remains tapped. It's still a land, activate only as a sorcery. Good lord, that's a lot of text. That is so much text. A lot of the cards in the set are actually fairly simple to my mind. And I, I respect that and I appreciate it. But god, that was so much reading. Um, 1.5. Hide in plain sight is 4 mana, 3 in the green for a sorcery. Look at the top 5, cloak 2 of them. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Not Coca-Cola. It is not Collected Company, ladies and gentlemen. It's not my hot cocoa on a nice snowy evening when I'm sitting by the fire and I just want to go, oh, there's marshmallows, mm, it's delicious. It's not that card. Um, and I'm starting to come around on it. People keep saying, oh, it's a cocoa that never misses. It's cocoa can, that can hit larger creatures, which cocoa can't do. And like, all those things are true. Card is still bad. Uh, two. Two. Homicide Investigator is, uh, seriously, it's one black for a 2-2 human detective. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, investigate. The ability triggers only once each turn. This is a nice little card right here, ladies and gentlemen. Really want to play it in Commander. Like in my LSL core and all that, you know, all those aristocrat decks. I want to try it out there. Um, but even in Standard, you know, you sacrifice a creature to Bart, and then you get a, a artifact to sacrifice to Bart. So that's that's a nice little loop, even though you can only do it once per turn. I just like it. So I'm going to give this card a 2.75. I think that it's really, really close. Um, honestly, just because your dude's going to die in combat, or just like if your opponent points a removal spell um, at anything, you get, a, you get to investigate? Like, that's almost going up a card on them. Like, you turn all of their removal spells into Faithful Absence. And Fateful Absence kind of draws you two cards. That's really good. The card's fine. Um, it also doesn't say other on it anywhere. So whenever it dies, <laughs> you get to get your investigate. That's a good card, man. 2.75, and I mean at the very least. And yes, hat. Uh, Hotshot Investigators is six mana, five and a blue for a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, Vidal can detect it. When it ETBs, return up to one other target creature to its owner's hand if you controlled it. Investigate. Uh, the limited playable six mana card, 1.25. Hunted Bone Brute is three mana, two and a black for a 6 2 skeleton beast with menace. When it enters the battlefield, your opponent gets two 1 1 white dog no, creature tokens. When Bone Brute dies, each opponent loses three life, and you can disguise this for one and a black. So, in a way, you're just paying three mana for a roundabout bolt on your opponent. Um, it, it's more than that. Obviously, it's a lot more than that. I don't love this, though. I see a lot of people out there loving this card, and obviously it goes in fight rigging, and, oh, if you cut down even one of the dogs, or if you cast an in the festivities, or whatever, then suddenly you get through with your 6-2. That's good. You know, it's all good. All good stuff. But all that said, I just don't know that they're really... Like, like I think you want to play other options. You know what I mean? In your three-drop slot, besides this, in a lot of cases, but... Again, this is another one of those, like, one of the cards we were talking about earlier that I'm really I'm really willing to be wrong on. Very willing to be wrong on this card, but for now I'm just going to give it, like, a 2.25 and call it a day. Um, I just, I don't like anything that's going to die to a shock, but, or play with fire. I don't know. I just, I, I'm, I'm a little reticent about this one is all I'm saying. Um, up next is Hustle. But also Bustle. Uh, Hustle is blue and red hybrid for an instant. Target creature attacks or blocks this turn if able. Bustle is four and two um, gruel hybrids for a sorcery. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Get that trample till another turn. You may turn a creature you control face up. Interesting card, but really not great on either mode. The first mode is tantamount to removal in some situations, or equal to removal in some, but still not the best card ever, I don't think, unless I'm... This is one that I just, I have this feeling that we're all terribly wrong and the card is great, but it's actually, it's not. Come on, come on, Deb, it's not a good card. I'll just give this all 1.75. Illicit Masquerade is four mana, three and a black for an enchantment with flash. When it ETBs, put an imposter counter on each creature you control. Whenever a creature you control with an imposter counter on it dies, exile it. Return up to one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, really interesting sweeper protection, really interesting just removal spell counter in a way. You know, like if they go to take out your three drop with a removal spell, you can flash this in. Um, 
And when your when your guy dies to the removal spell, you get an even better creature from your graveyard. But it does cost a lot of setup. It does it does require a fair amount of setup. But some of that setup, I think it, here's the difference. It requires a fair amount of setup on curve. But if you play it on turn six or seven, all you really had to have done that game is play magic. You know, you've got stuff in your yard, you've got stuff that's attacking, you've got stuff that's going to die. So I think there's a turn or two in the game where this just becomes good. Um, but I think that to actually facilitate it on curve, you have to do things. And I'm not too sure about it, but I really like this card. I really like this card a lot for obvious reasons. But I think it might go beyond jank and be actually decent. I'm going to give this card a 2.75. But this card could be as much as like a 3.25. It really, this card could be very good. Um, and I know I see people in chat right now, like card's absurd. Card is insane, you know. And I, I, I really want to believe. I want to believe that this is, you know, the ultimate version of this effect in black where like, I was just talking about these, you know, like one mana black spells where the next time a creature would die this turn, you put it back on the battlefield tapped or something like black does that, right? This is the ultimate version of that effect. You get a better creature instead of the one that just died. But another way of looking at that is that, yeah, you get that kind of effect, but you have to have a creature in your graveyard that you actually want to bring back in the first place. So you have to set that up. Um, you have to have four mana instead of the one mana that an effect like that would normally cost. So this to me seems like a, a cross between a reanimator spell and one of those black spells that brings back stuff that just died. Um, right. So there's some contexts you could look at this uh, in which, you know, four mana is too much. But there's other contexts you look at this and it's, oh, it's zombify. It's, an, it's a flash zombify. And that that's very exciting. Um, it's a, it's a spell that kind of protects one of my dudes. Like it, it, it basically fizzles a removal spell. They still get to kill my guy, but it invalidates a removal spell. At the same time, it gets a huge dude out of my yard and it's not a Christmas land thing to think that you could pull that off. Right. So there's really good stuff about this. Um, but I will just at the moment, give it a 2.75 with room to impress me beyond that. You know, uh, ill-timed explosion is up next. This is four mana, two a black, or a black, there's no black in this, two a blue and a red for a sorcery. Draw two cards. Then you may discard two cards. When you do, ill-timed explosion deals X damage to each creature where X is the greatest mana value among cards. Discarded this way. This is ridiculous. This card is, I think this card is crazy. Well, I really, I really do think this card is just absolutely nuts, man. Um, I, I... I don't know how to tell you how I feel about this. Every time I read it, I expect it to say, I expect it to say, exile one of those cards from your yard. And it does that much. But it doesn't do that. It lets you discard the cards. And they sit there in your yard. Forever. <laughs> That's really good. I keep expecting this to deal damage equal to a card you exile. Uh, after it hit the graveyard or whatever. But no, 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 no. Just draw two, discard the cards, and then they sit there forever. And you get a sweep. So, back in the day, not too long ago, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Sorry to bring it up. But Fable of the Mirror Breaker come down on turn three. And it's a race. You know, like on turn three, I'm going to play my Fable. I'm going to discard two. I'm going to draw two or whatever order that happened. Then. I'm going to discard two and I'm going to draw two. That's correct. Um, and then next turn, I have to get in with my goblin to get my, my treasure token, right? And then on that turn, on turn four, I can theoretically cast my reanimator spell. This, I actually think is like a, a similar principle to Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but it's in a completely different kind of deck, a sort of solar flare, you know, like a reanimator, a reanimator control hybrid is going to play something like this, where not only can you drop that reanimator target in there, but you can drop all kinds of other stuff, flashback stuff, you know, disturb creatures, whatever you're planning on doing. You can drop into your yard with this and then just cast later. So what I'm seeing in a lot of ways, because I think a lot of decks that play this are going to leverage the card you're putting in your yard in some way or another. So in a lot of ways, this is a four mana, sweep the board and draw two cards. Not that hard to make that happen. Um, even if you just, on curve, if you just, like, drop a four drop into the yard, you should sweep the board. 
But if you do drop like a portal to Phyrexia or an Atraxa or something like that in your yard, then like you're definitely sweeping the entire board for just four mana and drawing two and setting up your reanimator plan. Like this card just looks absolutely nuts to me, man. I just, I can't stop looking at this thing and thinking about it. A Grixis reanimator or something like that. Jeskai even potentially reanimator. Um, could really, really, really likes a card like this. So I love it. I love it. I really do. I think this is a solid three. At least. I, at least. I really think this could be one of the better cards in the entire set. Just set set your clocks. And yeah, it's a May, by the way. It's a May. Um, so if you want this to be like a really bad draw too, you can. And the thing is, I'm not making fun of it. I'm not making fun of that mode. There's going to be modes or times where that mode is fine. Control versus control. Draw it off the top on turn eight. I'll take a chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll draw my two off this. Keeps me going. So... It, it's just worth pointing out it has another mode on it. I've talked way too long about this card. Um, all I'm saying is I, I just really want to hammer home how how good I think this card is. I really this card's the future. I I think wouldn't stake my career on it, but draw two, discard two, sweep the board is that's that's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Incinerator the Guilty is up next. Six mana, six six dragon with flying and trample, flample we call it. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you can collect evidence X. When you do, Incinerator the Guilty deals X damage to each creature and each planeswalker that player controls. In pre-release, this is a five. <laughs> if you get this in your pre-release pool, you you play it and seal. But in standard, it's just not good enough. It costs way too much. Waits turn to attack. Doesn't even always do the thing when you do it. Most of the time, this is not good. It's like a, it's like a it's like a two. And like that's all the strength of its limited playability. Innocent bystander is two mana. One on a red for a two one goblin citizen. Whenever it's dealt damage, three or three or more damage, you investigate. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Not that good, really. I'll just give this a 1.5. Inside source is three mana, two and a white for a 1-1 one, one human citizen. When it ETBs, you also get a 2-2 two, two white and blue detective. You can pay three, tap it, and target detective you control. Gets plus two, plus zero, gains vigilance till end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Um, Actually puts three power in play on two guys for three mana, so not the worst thing in the world. 1.75 for your your narc your rat insidious roots baby this is a green and a black for a enchantment creature tokens you control have tap add a mana of any color whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard create a zero one green plant creature token then put a plus one plus one counter on each plant you control where does it sit what is this card 2.75 and i'll leave it at that I've already talked a lot about this card, and I do expect some things out of it, but I simultaneously uh, don't. <laughs> kind of chickening out and taking both roads on that, but I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up like petering out and not doing much, but there's also a large part of me that wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being a very, very important card in multiple formats, but honestly, the part that, that thinks that it's actually not going to be that good is... So, so let's, be, let's be completely honest with ourselves. Uh, larger than the part that thinks it's good, so... <clears throat> I'm going to have to give this a two and a half with massive room to grow. This is honestly anywhere between a two and a half, which I think is the floor of the card to a three and a half. But I don't think it's, I think it will surprise everybody by not being quite where it needs to be. Honestly, um, intrude on the mind. This card's good. Uh, this is five mana, three and two blue for an instant. Reveal the top five cards of your library. Separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one of those piles. Put that pile into your hand, the other into your graveyard. Create a zero, zero colorless Thopter and put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each card put into your graveyard this way. Of course, Thopters also have flying. I have seen at least one person in my comments section um, over this previous season be like, yeah, I'm a control player and I don't really see anything in this set. The set with the mana leak in it, first of all. <laughs> the set with the mana leak in it, but also the set with this card in it. Yeah, you know, what? Like, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want if you're a control player and you think you don't see anything in this set? Maybe they just hadn't seen the mana leak. Maybe they hadn't seen that. This card's a trap. This card is phenomenal. This card is unbelievably good. That's my take. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be the best card in standard or anything, but I do not think this card is a trap. You know, people said that about Factor Fiction, too. I'm not saying that it's going to play out the same way FOF did, but when Factor Fiction came out, there was a very vocal group of people who were like, this card's a trap. 
This card's bad. It costs four mana. This card's terrible, <laughs> you know? And I have seen a few people with that take. This card's overrated. This card's a trap. This card's bad. I think this card is nasty. I think this card is dumb. <laughs> five mana is a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. We all know that five mana is a lot. That's a very good point. But I also think that on average, three cards and a 2-2 two, two flopter, flopter, or a 3-3 three, three flopter and two cards, that's just always good at instant speed. It's always going to like do something during your opponent's combat step or their end step. It's a, it's a thing that can, you know, basically what, like four or five or six for one. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you get a bunch of cards in your hand and you also slap something out of the air on the other side of the table or trade your thopter for something, then you're, you got, you got pretty ahead on that exchange. Um, if you're don't, if you're not worried about taking something out in combat or like getting a block for the turn or whatever, then you just like EOT, get a 3-3, three, three, a 4-4, four, four, a 5-5, five, five, and start swinging over for big chunks of your opponent's life total. I just don't know that there's necessarily a mode where this card is like bad. It's like, I, I just, I don't know, man. Yeah, we've, we've got some people in the chat who are like, I don't know. And some people who are like, this card is gross. So like really people have a lot of differing opinions on this card and that's that checks that tracks with what I've seen online so far, but I'm in the camp of people who think this card is very good, very good. 3.25 all day D dropped her. It's a thopter, but you could also draw it's dropped her. It doesn't add up. It's funny to read after that last card. It's five mana as well. This is three and two black for an instant. Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Suspect it. Did you catch it? This card's instant speed. It's instant speed reanimator spell, but you can't use it to block because the creature gets suspected. So you I guess there's that, but you can still cast it EOT, instant speed. Oh, it's all right. Graveyard shift is a five mana reanimator spell. You got to jump through the, like hoops to get that to be instant speed. This one, no. Not this one. Just instant speed. I kind of like it. I'll give it a two. Um, Izoni, center of the web is up next. Six mana for a 5-4 legendary elf detective with menace. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can collect evidence four. If you do, you get two, two, one black and green spider creature tokens with menace and reach. Sack four tokens, surveil two, then draw two. You gain two life. Card is solid. Not a whole lot of cards that I really want to pay six mana for in standard right now. Does it beat mono red? Probably not. Does it beat domain ramp? Probably not. So... There's some issues with like mid-range six mana things right now, but there really is an awful lot of value on this card. And it's fairly easy to get it to like give you a bunch of board presence and or and or give you <laughs> give you a bunch of cards like the turn it comes out, you know, so it's pretty good. I, I, I can't hate on it too badly. I will give this a 2.75 despite the incredibly high casting cost. I do think it does have like potential homes in uh, at the very least standard jaded in it. Analyst is up next. Um, two mana, one in a blue for a three, two human detective with defender. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, jaded analyst loses defender gains vigilance till end of turn. Um, I like the flavor on this, but that's about it. 1.25 Judith carnage connoisseur. This is a great example of why, how we're scoring cards for standard mostly and not commander. Or else this would get a very high score. Five mana, three in Rakdos for a three, four legendary human shaman. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, choose one. The spell gains death touch and lifelink. Hey, in the festivities. Or create a two, two red in creature token with whenever the creature dies, it deals two damage to each opponent. I want to try and make it work in standard, but there's just no way it does. It costs five mana. You got to untap with it in play. Quintessential, not great in standard. Now, if you do untap with it in play and you have cards in your hand to cast, which again is asking a lot, then it probably does some stuff, right? Um, all things considered, they're not great there, but an extremely fun commander, super fun looking command, a magecraft commander for Rakdos that does two awesome things, works really well with any like global damage spell, you know, just really, really cool commander that I can't wait to mess around with, but you don't get a whole lot of points for that in this review. So I'm just going to give this a 2.25. And I really want to give it a three, but if this were a commander review, it would get a 3.75, but we're not doing that. Karlov Watchdog is up next. Four mana, three and a white for a three, two dog with vigilance. Permanent your opponent's control can't be turned face up during your turn. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, creatures you control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. So kind of a four mana, four, three anthem effect vigilance. It seems almost good, but it's, 
not. So I'll just give this a 1.75. Kaya, Spirits Justice. This is a lot of text. It's four mana, two, and Orzhov for a three loyalty planeswalker. Whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard are put into exile, you may choose a creature card from among those cards. Until end of turn, target token you control, token you control becomes a copy of it, except the token has flying. You can pay two, surveil two, exile a card from a yard. Plus one, exile a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. You can also minus two to exile a creature you control. For each other player, exile up to one target creature that player controls. Did, did you catch all that? It's so much text. This is anyone that's like, this set is way too complex. I honestly don't agree with you. But if the only card you read was Kaya, I 100% agree with you. This card is, card is so much text. But you know I love it. Gets points for being Orzov, gets points for being Kaya, but so long as we're attempting to be as objective as possible, I will still give this card a 3.25, a very, very high grade for a Zombify on a planeswalking body that surveils, messes around in graveyards, sur you know, synergizes with itself multiple ways, exiles things, <laughs> makes tokens. Like, what does this card not do? So, you know, and it's only four mana to get down. I think it's a steal to get this on the table in the first place. And you just have so many options once you do. Great after the turn after a wedding announcement, obviously. So... I just love everything about this, uh, and I think it obviously has Holmes and Standard Day 1, so 3.25 is the lowest I'm going to give this card. Kellen, Inquisitive Prodigy. Four mana, two, a green, and a blue for a 3-4 legendary human fairy detective with Tail the Suspect as an adventure half. This is a sorcery. You investigate, and you can play an additional land this turn. It also has Flying and Vigilance on the body half, and whenever it uh, attacks, you destroy up to one artifact. If you controlled that artifact, you draw a card, baby. So, interesting stuff. I actually think this is underrated. Not many people talking about this card. It is not Growth Spiral. It does not draw you the card. It is not Instant Speed. It isn't Growth Spiral. But it's the closest thing we're going to get as a two-drop in standard. And note that it kind of plays into itself. You know, if you're actually able to get the other land drop, you can play Kellen himself on turn three. And that ain't bad, you know, just any time in the game, whether you play it on three or you wait, you develop your board plan, you know, you, maybe you sweep the board once or twice. And then later in the game, once things are exhausted on your opponents and then you play your three, four flyer, that seems OK. It's also a three, four flyer that can get you some card advantage when it does go to attack. I think this is better than a lot of people are grading it as right now. So I'll give it a 2.5 um, and I'm really tempted to go 2.75. I don't think this is terrible. Knife. Knife is a single red mana for a clue equipment. It means you can sack it to draw a card if you pay two. It equips for two, and as long as it's your turn, the equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, has first strike. So, sucks that it's only on your turn, but I'm giving all of these a 1.75 for a reason. They are one mana clues, and there's kind of nothing wrong with that. Crawl Whip Cracker. This. This guy's good. No one talking about this dude either, man. I think he's great. A green and a black for a 3-2 insect assassin with reach when it ETBs. Destroy a token an opponent controls. I think this card's getting lost in the shuffle a little bit while people look at like more exciting cards in the set, but I actually think this is going to be a sideboard all-star, baby, and it can go multiple formats back. I really think that, you know, come down, get you down on board presence, take out your token, Plus, you know, a creature I'm not embarrassed to play in the first place, a 3-2 reach for two mana. Like, yeah, I don't think it's great. I don't. I think it's easy enough to come by a three mana, 3-2 in standard right now. But, you know, when you get one that like Necrotol's a token when it comes into play, like Ravenous Chupacabra is a token, we're starting to talk, dude. I think this is very, very sideboard playable. So uh, 2.25. Um, and honestly, I, I want to go higher, but it's a little narrow. So we'll keep it at two and a quarter. Krenko, Baron of Ten Street, three mana, two and a red for a three, three legendary gobbo with haste. You can tap it, sack an artifact to put a plus one, plus one counter on each goblin you control, including special K over here. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay red. If you do, create a one, one red goblin creature token that gains haste until end of turn. So synergizes with itself a good bit. Um, the gobbo has haste, you know, just a lot of cool stuff about this. Probably a fun commander. Um, and also maybe halfway decent in Anvil, but I'm not sure because, you know, Anvil, you play it on turn two, turn three, you play this and, um, then what, <laughs> what do you do that turn that, that this card allowed you to, to do that turn? I'm not actually sure. You know, do you play goblins in that deck? You might because like Sakins and Smelter's a goblin. And I actually think there's at least one other goblin that matters for the, uh, Anvil deck. 
I can't put my finger on now. Oh, oh, and there's also, um, what is it called, guys? What is it called? The one mana red thing that you sacrifice an artifact and you get three goblin bodies? You get three 1-1 one, one red goblins, pay a single red mana, sack an artifact. It's that thing. Um, and good lord, Krinko goes really well with that, doesn't he? In your, in your anvil deck? Um, Gleeful Demolition, thank you, extra. Yeah, that's... We're actually kind of cooking something up. That seems halfway decent. <laughs> I'm going to give Krinko a solid... <laughs> it's tough. 2.75. I think the haste goes a long way. If, it were no, if there were no haste on this, I would hate it. I'll, like Not hate it, but I would like it a lot less. But especially with the haste, we'll definitely give it that 2.75. 100%. Um, Krinko's Buzz Crusher is up next. This is four mana. Two and two red for a four, four artifact creature. It's a Thopter that's thick, a thick, a thicker. Uh, it's also an insect. It has Flample. When an ETBs for each player, destroy up to one non-basic land that player controls. For each land destroyed this way, its controller may search their library for a basic, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. The card does not actually say target on it anywhere. And even though you are definitely, obviously, objectively targeting a land with it, Design team says that since we don't say target, it's not actually targeting, so it can kill lotus fields. Um, another hexproof lands. Interesting way to use the card, but I think that this is kind of one of the standard chase cards in the set that's probably going to see a fair amount of play. Um, or it's going to be one of those standard cards that people want to play for the first week, and then it sucks. They find out that it sucks, you know? <laughs> but I actually think this is pretty good, you know? Using Field of Ruins ability when it comes into play is sometimes Ds. So most of the time D's. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a 3.25. Um, I think this is a very good card, but you know, I think an another one that some people would give a four to, but I'm not going to go that far. I think that there's a lot of use cases on the card, but we've also seen a lot of times where a four mana four, four flample just isn't actually that playable and standard. And there's not a whole lot of reason to think this one will be any different, but taking out like a tri land when it enters play is, kind of important and you know you're keeping them honest everyone's gonna have to have basic lands now but they already kind of did Crovod haunch is up next a single white mana for a food equipment equip creature gets plus two plus so oh, equips for two now you can pay two tap it and sack it to gain three because it's a food but when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield you can pay one and a white if you do create two one one white dog creature tokens put this in mardu anvil i don't know i just like this card um i don't like having to pay the mana to get the two dogs but I understand why you do have to do that. Um, otherwise, the card would have to cost more mana up front. And I don't think they really wanted that to be the case. But really interesting design here. And I want to go to 1.75 on this. And honestly, I have the compulsion to go to 2. But I don't think I should. Kylox's Volt Strider here is 3 mana. 1, a blue, and a red for a 4-4 four, four vehicle. And you can collect evidence 6 to have it become an artifact creature till end of turn. Or you can crew it for 2. When it attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among the cards exiled with it. If that spell will be put into a graveyard, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. I got a very adamant DM from somebody today who um, basically told me all their reasons why Volt Strider should have been on my sleepers list. <laughs> and honestly, it was it was close. It was one of those close cards to my, street, my sleepers list. Not a whole lot of people talking about this, but I do think there's a world where this card is pretty playable, um, especially considering if I play it on turn three. That's when I play it. Well, if I play big score on turn four or anything that lets me discard cards, then suddenly I just get to cast a spell for free and attack with a four, four. I can cast a, I can put a huge spell in my graveyard to a big score or anything like that. Um, and then effectively instantly attack and cast that like eight casting cost spell. And that is quite good. Yeah, this with the board wipe. Yeah, this with the board wipe actually is a good call. Uh, the is it board wipe. It's a good one too. Um, that's exactly the kind of play I'm lining up too when you think about it. Yeah, this into the is it board wipe would be pretty phenomenal in some ways. You know, so I do think there's something to this card and I'm surprised I don't see more people talking about it. Um, probably shocking to some people, but I'm going to give this card a three. I'm going to do it. That is a much higher score than I think a lot of people think it deserves. But this is a much better card than I think a lot of people think it is. So, yeah, actually seems busted. Yeah, exactly. That's why I have to give it at least a three. I 
I honestly think there's a lot more to this card than people are giving it credit for. This it just looks like, oh, it's the wacky is it thing that lets you cast free spells and it's bad. Yeah, but I think there's I think there's a lot there. I think there's a lot there with this card. Yeah, cast your big spell after the board wipe. That would be gross. That would be just imagine that lineup. Imagine that lineup. You know? I have to look at like seven and eight mana spells in standard. But it, it would be gross to play this on three. And then for four, you wipe the entire board, cast a seven drop, and attack for four. Like, that seems strong. You know? Yeah, it does say. It does It does say you don't. It does say you have to cast it. You have to actually pay the mana for it. Ah, well, that's crappy. I'm thinking you can cast it. For, for some reason, I just auto-completed in my head you could cast it for free. 2.5. <laughs> it lost a half a point. Off not being able to break it that way. 2.5. We'll, we'll go down to that. Thanks for pointing. I just, for some reason, I just auto-completed that it cast it for free. But it, no, you do have to pay the mana cost. It appears as though you do have to pay the mana cost. So, yeah. Yeah, two and a half, though. I'm still giving it a two and a half. Casting spells like that is still okay. But Kylie is sad, sad. Boo. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, two other people in chat thought you cast it for free. <laughs> Kylog's Visionary Inventor is up next. Seven mana, five, a blue and a red for a 4-4 four, four Legendary Vaishino Artificer. Menace, Ward 2, and Haste. Whenever Kylog's Visionary Inventor attacks, sacrifice any number of other creatures. Exile the top X cards of your library, where X is their total power. You may cast any number of instant and or sorcery spells from among the exile cards. Here's the magic phrase. Without paying their mana cost. This, though, is too expensive, and it's just... A lot of hoops to jump through. It wants you to pay seven mana and sacrifice guys. So I just really can't give this more than a two, but it's very, it is a vent inventive card. Lamplight Phoenix, three mana, one and two red for a three, three Phoenix with flying. When it dies, you may exile it, collect evidence four. If you do return Phoenix to the battlefield tapped. I kind of compare this to squee a little bit, right? Because squee is like exile four cards from your yard. Whereas this is exile for mana cost, but squee, you can exile those cards whenever you want to. This is when it dies, you have to do that. And so I think this is probably worse than squee, even given the evasive ability. Um, but still, you know, being compared to squee is a pretty good space to be in. So I'll give this card a two and a half as well. I think it's in that neighborhood. Lazav, wearer of faces. A blue and a black for a 2-3 legendary shapeshifter detective. Whenever it attacks, exile a card from a yard, then investigate. Whenever you sack a clue, you may have Lazav become a copy of a creature card exiled with it till end of turn. So there are multiple things you can do to get yourself that Tyranax Rex on turn 3 or whatever you're trying to do with this. But even though it's not Christmas land, it's not going to happen all the time. It just isn't. It's fairly easy to interact with that idea. You know, you can just cut down the Lazav or... You know, lightning strike the Lazala. Every every removal spell kills him. But dice removal isn't the best reason to explain why a card is bad. This card has decent stats, at the very least. For the two mana, it's not a very high... It's not a very big investment in the first place. Um, and you can easily get it to replace itself in most cases. Especially if you go first, you're more likely to get a consequence for your attack and get the investigate. Obviously, the ways to break it are the ways it becomes a good card. But I'm... You have to devote mana to breaking it. It only becomes the dude for a turn. You don't get ETB triggers. I think this card is solid, but in no way is it busted. Even if it does have busted lines, I still think those busted lines are ultimately fair. You know? So, yeah, you can become Tyranax Rex twice. It, you can do it more than once, but it's going to cost you mana every turn. And I don't know. I think the card is, again, a solid magic card. So I'll give it a 2.75. I think that it's playable in some spaces. Is it as playable as we want it to be? I, I, we, we'll see. Lead pipe is a single black for an artifact. It's also a clue and an equipment. That means you can pay two, sack it, draw a card, and equips for two. Equip creature gets plus two, plus oh. And whenever the creature dies, each opponent loses one life. This is my favorite of all of these. Like, kind of by a lot. But I'm still just going to give it 1.75. Leering onlooker. Hmm, two mana. Uh, one and a black for a 1-3 vamp with flying. Pay four mana, exile it from your yard to create two 1-1 one, one tapped bats. What do I actually score this card? Two and a quarter. I'll throw the quarter point on that. Two and a quarter. 
Ley Line of the Guild Pack. So this is Selesnia Hybrid, Simic Hybrid, Golgari Hybrid, Gruul Hybrid for an enchantment. If Ley Line is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Each non-land permanent you control is all colors and land you control are every basic land type in addition to whatever other types they may have. So, wow. Is it good or not? I actually don't love this card. Uh, it does work really well with Case of the Pact or whatever it's called. You know, again, play this for free on your opening turn and then play the case, solve it for free or whatever um, on your second instep. Seems okay, but it's about the only really cool thing I like. The only really cool thing I can think to do with this card. I'm sure there's other stuff, obviously. Uh, if Coalition Victory is ever unbanned in Commander, I guess this is the thing. But, um... Uh, I love the casting cost on this. I'll say that much, but altogether, it just seems like one of those big, like, fan service kind of cards, but maybe it's not actually that good. I mean, five color decks need to play the one of in the main because, you know, every six or so games, you'll start with it in your opening hand and then it's a concordant crossroads or whatever. Like, you don't have to worry about the whatever land you play for the rest of the game, which is, you know, big for a five color deck. So I'm not saying it won't see any play, but... I really can't give this more than a two and a half. Yeah. You know, this will end up getting banned in modern discard. I'm predicting you also Lord bios predicting this card gets banned from at least one format. Yeah. It does instantly give domain. Like maybe I'm being a big dumb head on this, but why, why does it get banned? <laughs> you know, Am I missing something? Why does it get banned? Why does it get banned? What does it do? What card does it interact with that it's completely broken with? I mean, there might be something in Pioneer, Modern, right? There might be, but I just, I don't I don't know, man. I, I don't. I'm sticking with a 2.5. If it's more than that, it's more than that. But I'm not actually like incredibly impressed, you know. Yes, he say. <laughs> That's kind of true. Yeah, Leyline Binding, you just cast it on. You can now cast Leyline Binding on turn one, I guess. Sort of. Maybe. Lightning Helix. What do you score Lightning Helix? Two mana for an instant, three to target. You gain three life. So you cast Bolt and Healing Salve at the same time for the same amount of mana in one card rather than two. Um, What does Lightning Helix get? I gave Assassin's Trophy a three and a quarter. Lightning Helix gets a three. Living Conundrum is five mana, four and a blue for a two, five elemental with Hexproof. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, skip that draw instead, cowboy. As long as there are no cards in your library, Conundrum has base power and toughness. Ten, ten. It has flying and vigilance. And of course, don't forget the Hexproof. So that's a sweet dude, man. Five mana is a lot, but you know. <laughs> by the time you don't have any cards in your library, I assume you have five mana laying around. <laughs> so... I don't know. Maybe there's decks that want to somehow cheat this guy out and flip their deck over. He's good with Leveler, but there's already two cards like this guy that are better with Leveler. But Thassa's Oracle just literally wins you the game. So I just, I don't know. It's a fun card, and I like cards like this. So I'll give it a 2.25. Long Goodbye is a decent removal spell. Two mana, one on a black for an instant that can't be countered. Destroy a creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. So we get what I believe is appears to be a strictly better Eliminate. And Eliminate, already a pretty okay card. So I'll give this a 2.5. Lost in the Maze is a tough one. This is X and 2 blue for an enchantment with Flash. When Lost in the Maze ETBs, tap X target creatures. Put a stun counter on the guys you don't control. Tapped creatures you control have Hexproof. Neat. <laughs> it's just really neat. This could be potentially very good with vehicles. You know, because whenever your opponent tries to target a guy, I'll just crew a vehicle. <laughs> and suddenly my dude has Hexproof. Just really neat. There's other ways to pull that off, but I think vehicles are the best way to do it uh, while still playing cards you want to play. Um, this is actually halfway decent tempo, especially given the fact that they gave it flash. You play it when your opponent declares attackers, stun like two of their dudes, you know? That seems all right. <laughs> it seems all right. Or you could conversely just play this for two mana at instant speed um, as a, a, a counter spell of sorts. You know, your opponent goes to target one of your tap dudes, Play this, flash it in. That's not only is it a save your guy spell, a counter spell against removal, but also it just sits on the table for the rest of the game and suddenly all your tap dudes will have Hexproof forever for only two mana. Um, I think this card is very good. I really do. You know, I've said over and over this previous season that you really want your save my guy spells in blue to be one mana. Slip out the back, shore up. Those are fantastic spells. I see a lot of play. 
Uh, this does cost two, and it's mana intensive at that. But I think this is the kind of spell I kind of don't mind paying two for, because I get it for the rest of the game. I get tapped creatures you control of Hexproof for the rest of the game, you know? And I think that's actually a very good line of text. So I'll give this a 2.75. Yeah, good with, with Hilda. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Hilda deck, and I hope that it gets more pieces, and this is definitely a good piece. Loxodon Eavesdropper. I'm so stupid. Uh, during preview season, I was like, how does being an elephant make you a better spy? Aren't you, like, big and loud and stuff? He's got huge ears. He's got huge ears, dummy. He can hear better. Four mana for a th three and a green for a three, three elephant detective when he ETBs investigate. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Eavesdropper gets plus one, plus one, gains vigilance to you, EOT. That's... Not terrible, at least in limited, 1.75. Lumbering Laundry is a 5-mana 4-5 Golem. Until end of turn, you may look at the face-down creatures you don't control any time. Just pay 2 mana for that. And you can disguise it for 5. Bad card, 1. Macabre Reconstruction is 4 mana, 3 and a black for a sorcery. The spell costs 2 less to cast if a creature card was put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn. Return up to 2 target creature cards from your yard to your hand. So if this were instant speed, we would be super hella talking, but we're not. That said, this is mostly going to be 2 mana to draw 2 cards at sorcery speed on a lot of turns. And I think that's a better card than it looks like. I'm going to give this a 2.25. Magnetic Snuffler is 5 mana for a 4-4 artifact construct. When it ETBs, return target equipment card from your yard to the battlefield attached to Magnetic Snuffler. Let's go, Colossus Hammer. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Snuffler. A lot of people are actually kind of excited about this for certain decks, but it costs 5 mana, man. It is like a robot anteater with like a metal detector on it, so like whoever did the art is a genius. Thank you, Daniel Lundgren. It's really, really nice. But aside from that, I'll just give it like a 1.25. I really don't think it's very good, guys. Magnifying Glass is three mana for a reprint. Artifact, tap, add uh, colorless, pay four, tap, investigate, uh, 1.5. Um, I'll actually give Snuffler a 1.5 too. Retroactive, 1.5. Magnifying Glass, 1.5. I know, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. I gave it a 1.5. But I, I just, I don't think it's great. <laughs> Makeshift Binding is three mana, two and a, a white for an enchantment. When an ETBs exile a creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield, you gain two life. That's okay. 1.75. Make your move is three mana, two and a, a white for an instant. Destroy an artifact, enchantment, or creature with power four or greater. So, kind of a better destroy evil that does cost, you know, half again what a destroy evil costs. It's a very real cost, but I'm still going to give this a 2.5. I think this is really, really good removal, man. You can basically main deck this, seriously. Market Watch Phantom is three mana, one and a white for a 2 2 spirit detective. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, Phantom gains flying until end of turn. A limited sort of playable card, but about stops there. 1.5. Massacre Girl, known killer baby, four mana, two and two black for a 4 4 legendary human assassin with menace. Creatures you control have wither. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if its toughness was less than one, draw a card. So see how the wither helps you draw cards off of it? I still don't think it's that great. It really counts on you fighting out in the trenches with your opponent. That's actually not going to happen all the time. Um, Creatures you can draw up wither is a very good piece of text. Very good piece of text. But all in all, I still am only going to give this card like a two and a half. I think it's fine, but is it good enough to be like a real player in standard? I have a lot of doubts on that. Meddling Utes. Meddling Utes is up next. Five mana. There's Daphne right there. Five mana, three, a red, and a white for a four, five human detective with haste. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, investigate. 1.75. Melic Reforged Researcher is five mana, three, a blue, and a red for a star, star, a legendary weird detective. Its power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of instants and sorcery cards in your yard. And the first instant and sorcery spell you cast each turn costs three less to cast. Five mana is probably too much for this. Note, this is not limited playable. Um, it doesn't show up in packs or anything. You do, you might get a shot at getting one of these at your pre-release, but weirdly, you can't play it in your deck. But these are standard legal. Um, and I think the text box is unbelievable on this card. I think the text box is really, really good, you know? But five mana might be pricing it out of standard, so I'll give it a 2.5. Mistway Spy is a blue mana for a 1-1 one, one Merfolk D-Tech with flying. Disguise, one and a blue. When it's turned face up until end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, investigate. Halfway interesting, but probably not quite standard playable. 1.75. I do like a flying man, though. Murder. What do you give murder? One and two black for an instant. Destroy a target creature. Perfect. Perfect magic card. Um... 
Gotta give murder a two, two and a half. That's a two and a half. That shows you the power of a two and a half. Reasonably playable on occasion. You know, Museum Nightwatch, though, is four mana, three and a white for a 3-2 centaur soldier. When it dies, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. Disguise, one and a white. That's one of my favorite disguise guys in Limited just because I like the dudes that know they're going to die in combat, but they still, like, pay you back a little bit, and they're not that expensive to disguise in the first place. That's kind of neat. But still, just 1.75. Neighborhood Guardian, this dude's... Look how happy he is. Look how happy everyone is to be around him. He costs two mana, one and a white for a 2-2 unicorn. Whenever another creature with power two or less ETBs under your control, a creature you control gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Was an honorable mention for the sleepers video, but all things considered, I just got to give it a two. Nervous Gardener, two mana, one and a green for a 2-2 dryad with disguise, single green mana. When it's turned face up, search your library for a land with a basic land type, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. So... I'm just going to give this like a 1.5, I think. I don't have too much to say about it. It wants to be a decent disguise guy so badly, but it just doesn't quite make it there. Night Drinker Morai is up next. This is four mana, three, and a black for a 4-2 vampire with flying. When it ETBs, you lose three life, and you can disguise it for, for two black mana. Why do I lose three life? <laughs> I guess it's a four mana, four power flyer at Uncommon. That's not very good. I guess you can disguise it to not have to lose the life, but yikes. Um, I'll just give this like a 1.25. This card's awful. niv Mizzet Guild Pact is one of each color uh -oh, for a 6-6 six, six legendary dragon avatar with flying and hexproof from multicolored. Whenever niv Mizzet um, Guild Pact deals combat damage to a player, it deals X damage to any target. Target player draws X cards. You gain X life, where X is the number of different color pairs among permanent you control that are exactly two colors. A bunch of Myth math and riff raff on this because you have to actually deal combat damage with it and you have to have a couple of multicolored things that are exactly two colors. A lot of setup, a lot of presumption on this card. Want to love it. It's my boy Niv Mizzy, but I'm not in the same room with him technically, so I can kind of take shots at him slightly. I'll just give this card a two and I'm serious. I really wish it were better than that. You could just say it's a five mana six six flyer and that's good enough. So we'll give it a two and a quarter. No more lies. The mana leak. Uh, white and a blue for an instant. Counter a spell unless it's controller pays three. That spell is countered this way. Exile it, baby. So it's not as good as mana leak. I keep seeing people call this a strictly better mana leak. That's not what strictly better means. Mana leak can go in any deck that has blue in it. Any deck that has, I was going to say islands, but just the capability of reliably playing blue mana on turn two. Any deck. This has to go in a blue-white deck or an Esper deck or a Jeskai deck, or you get what I'm saying, a Bant deck. Uh, but that is a very real restriction and does keep a card from technically being strictly better than another card. That That's a, that's a very real drawback, the fact that it's Azorius. But now that I'm done with that, little disclaimer... This card is a 3.25. Um, this is a real deal. The real deal Holyfield right here. Real deal. Slightly worse Dovin's Veto? It's not very often I would stop the, the speed run to do this. But the, the real secret here is that these aren't actually speed runs. <laughs> I want them to be speed runs, but instead I do stuff like this. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. Counter target non creature spell. Counter target non creature spell. So, Dobin's Veto is a negate that can't be countered. Whereas, No More Lies is a mana leak that exiles the card. That's. 3.25 seems soft. The only reason it's 3.25 and not like 4 is because it's a counter spell. You know, it's not a bomb, it doesn't win the game by itself. It's not a thing that, if left unchecked, will absolutely murder your opponent in two turns. It's not a thing that synergizes with itself in such a way that it's a must-kill. None of that. None of that. It's just a good old-fashioned counterspell. So I can't... It's, it's a lot like um, Assassin's Trophy, right? One of the best removal spells ever printed, but I'm not going to give it a 3.75. It's a removal spell. And I kind of feel the same way about this. 3.25 is, is very good when you consider sort of the context of what we're doing here. Um, Mana Leak, I would give a 3.5. Mana Leak's a better card. Just is. Just is. any deck can play. Mana Leak's a better card. Uh, this, though, assuming that you're in the colors that play it, is obviously technically better than Mana Leak most of the time. <clears throat> Mo not even all, but most. 
But exiling is such a tremendous upside. It really is. Slammed together Dissipate and Mana Leak and came up with this. This is a phenomenal magic card. One of the best cards in the set. Pretty easily. Not on my watch is two mana, one and a white for an instant. Exile an attacking creature. That's not bad. <laughs> really not. Two and a half. <laughs> sure. I'll play that sometime. Novice Inspector is Thraben Inspector. Just a white mana for a 1-2 human detective when an ETB is investigate. What do you give Thraben Inspector? Again, not a bomb. Doesn't win the game, but very, very good card, right? So I'll give this a 2.75. It's, it's in that neighborhood. Would I give Inspector a 3? Maybe. Uh, 2.75. No witnesses is four mana, two and two white for a sorcery. Each, excuse me, each player who controls the most creatures investigates, then destroy all creatures. What would I give Depopulate? A three? I'll give this a three. Uh, Offender at large. It's not a three. That's not a three. It's not. <coughs> this is a 2.75. This is a 2.75. Offender at large is five mana, four and a red for a 5-4 giant rogue, disguised for five mana when it enters the battlefield or is turned face up. One cra- tw- up to one target creature gets plus two, plus zero till end of turn. The whole reason this card exists is the gag, the visual gag of it's a rogue that's also a giant. It's a sneaky giant and not even really. Look at it. Look at her trying to be sneaky on the battlefield. She like stepped on this guy. It's a hilarious joke. 1.25. Officious interrogation is a blue and a white for an instant that costs a blue and a white more to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target players. Investigate X times. X is the total number of creatures those players control. I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't seen the video yet, but needless to say, this is on my sleepers list. Nobody really talking about it. I think it's really good. It doesn't do anything technically the turn that you play it, and you have to pump more mana into it to actually draw the cards, um, which is the worst thing about the card. But all things considered, it's really hard not to say this is not at least a two and a half. Um, and it could go well beyond a two and a half before it's all said and done. I'll even give this a two and three quarters. I'll give this a 2.75 right now. But on the job is up next. Four mana for an instant. Creatures you control get plus two plus one till in turn. Investigate. One and a half. Out cold is four mana. Three and a blue for an instant. The spell can't be countered. Tap up to two target creatures and put a stun counter on each of them. Investigate. I like that it's instant speed, right? Uh, and it can hit like warded dudes, but still just like 1.5. Um, probably not even that good. Outrageous Robbery is X and two black for an instant. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of the library face down, which is kind of nasty enough. You may look at and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, spin mana as though it were any type to cast it. So, pretty good. Pretty good, but not amazing. You know, it's one of those. Uh, uh, this can end the game. Uh, it can be a bomb, but mostly I just think it's really good card advantage that if you do have... A lot of or infinite mana can also just end the game, but I don't think that's going to happen super often. As it is, this is pretty decent rate for card advantage, you know, instant speed brain geyser, but you're counting on your opponent to have good cards. But I've used this argument before. This is standard magic. We're all playing good cards. There's not a single bad card people play in standard magic, but, you know, maybe you're playing against Bant Toxic and you end up getting like three cards that don't do anything for your deck. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what am I going to do with these dinky Toxic guys? Like, that's possible. So you're running a risk when you play a card like this, but I still think it's good, and I'll give it a three. Um, yeah, somebody in chat, this is gross. <laughs> like, I do think it's pretty gross, so a three is a very good score, and it's honestly slightly higher than I want to score a card like this. But I do still think there's a, a long enough life ahead of it, not only in Commander, but in the occasional like blue-black control deck, that three is about right. I mean, 2.75 is probably closer to actually right, but... I got a lot of personal love for an instant speed brain geyser, so I'll give it a three. <laughs> Perimeter Enforcer is um, two mana, one, and I guess it's technically a mind spring, isn't it? Anyway, Perimeter Enforcer is one and a white for a 1-1 one, one human detective with flying and lifelink. Whenever another detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, Enforcer gets plus one, plus one, until end of turn. So... Eh, fine and limited detectives, so 1.75. Person of interest, 4 mana, 3 and a red for a 2-2 two, two human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, suspect it. And then you get a 2-2 two, two, uh, detective guy, so... Eh, 1.5. Persuasive interrogators, everybody. 6 mana, 4 and 2 black for a 5-6 gorgon detective. When an ETBs investigate, and whenever you sack a clue, target opponent gets 2 poison counters. Alright, put up or shut up. What's the actual rating on this card? 2.5. Cost way too much mana to get in play. Doesn't actually end the game immediately or anything, but certainly can. Will be janky fun. Might have an outside chance of being a playable if the format lines up just right, but 
honestly, chances are this doesn't actually see play because they've successfully priced it out. That said, I'm still giving it a two and a half because it will win games of magic for me on stream sometimes. And even though that's not the best criteria for a two and a half, I'm still going to give it to it because that line of text is busted. It just is a busted line of text. That's why it costs that much. Pick your poison as a single green mana for a sorcery. Choose one. Each opponent sacks an artifact. Each opponent sacks an enchantment. Or each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. Playable sideboard piece right here, everybody. I'm going to give this a two. 0.75 and I'm 100% serious as far as removal spells go this is a very very good one I'm fairly certain that it is polygraph orb is five mana four and a black for an artifact when it ETBs go to the top four of your library put two of them in your hand the rest into your yard you lose two life pay two tap it collect evidence three each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card or sack a creature it is not Turgrid's Lantern Really trying to be Turgid's Lantern is not. Uh, Turgid was a better card than Turgid Lantern, although we did win a bunch of games on stream off of Turgid Lantern, I believe. Um, I have loved that card before, but if it wasn't on stream, it was at least on the channel when we were doing gameplay before we started streaming. But So I have a special place in my heart for cards like this, but five mana? You're talking about five mana? At least it replaces itself twice. It gives you the best two from the top four. It casts Chemister's Insight. When it comes into play, when it comes into play, it casts Chemister's Insight, gives you an artifact, and then gives you a semi turgrid's lantern. So this could have almost been on the sleepers list, but I would have been mostly blowing smoke if I put it on the sleepers list. I don't expect this to be any better than a two. Pompous Gadabout is up next. Is that really the English name for this card? Pompous Braggart was the translation. That's better than Gadabout. <laughs> it's three mana, two and a green for a 4-2 human citizen. That's hexproof on your turn. And it can't be blocked by creatures that don't have a name. <laughs> who are you? Who are you? Who are you to try to block me? It's, get out of here, you nobody. <laughs> it's, like, it's a cute card. I like the design on this too. And honestly, it's a little close, but I'll just give it a 1.75 presumed dead is one of these cards i was talking about earlier in black just one in a black for an instant until end of turn a creature gets plus two plus oh and gains when this creature dies return it to the battlefield under its owner's control and suspected so again one of these but you really want these to cost one mana they're still always okay though 1.5 private eye is three mana one a white and a blue for a three three homunculus detective other detectives you control get plus one plus one whenever you draw your second card each turn target detective can't be blocked this turn specific only to the detective deck or again i guess you could put this in your changeling deck and it'd be fine i want to not be able to be blocked <laughs> you know what i mean so uh, that's fine but it's only one detective a turn that's going to go unblocked like ever that's kind of crappy unlike other draw your second card each turn abilities there's really no reason to do this on your opponent's turn so there's that too I just, uh, I don't really care that much. <laughs> but for the detective deck, it's good. But I'm still just going to give it a two. Props Eidetic Memory is two mana. One and a blue for a legendary enchantment. When it ETBs, draw a card. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you draw on more than one card this turn, put X plus one plus one counters on a creature you control, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn, minus one. Um, I think this card is good. Uh quite good actually and even possibly like competitive playable not just a commander card I think a lot of people see an edh card on this and i do a little but what you're actually seeing here they could have just it could have just been you know creatures you control get plus one plus one till end of turn or like a creature you control gets plus one plus one till end of turn but instead they get counters you know what this reminds me of is the card from the Commander product, uh, Knowledge is Power, where it costs 5 mana for an enchantment, and creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. That seems fun. You can cast Brainstorm when your opponent attacks into you, like on their turn, and just like all your creatures suddenly get plus 3 plus 3 out of nowhere, you blow them out. There's a reason that card is 5 mana. This card seems like a version of that card for only 2 mana that pays you back when it comes into play. And for whatever reason, just because, just because it's going to go ahead and give you um, Library of Ling, Reliquary Tower, whatever, which is good value. But, you know, if you can facilitate this by drawing some cards, making your creatures bigger is really good. That's good. So I can't say that it's a, an amazing magic card and there's going to be turns where it doesn't do much of anything. It just kind of sits there because you don't get to draw extra cards. And even if you do get to draw extra cards, you don't have creatures out to get the counters. You know, um, yeah, kind of like Beanstalk reminds me of that too. Just two man enchantment draws a card when it comes into play, gets value. 
So I, I do think we should learn our lesson from Beanstalk, first of all. But this doesn't draw you any extra cards beyond the first. But it can make your creatures relatively big if you're drawing enough cards on your turn. Mostly EDH playable, but I would not be surprised if this had some standard applications. So I'm going to give this card a three. A three. I want to give it a two and a half, but if it's strong, it's incredibly strong. But honestly, I should pull back. 2.75. Let's split the difference. Two and three quarters on this card. Projector Inspector. This is three mana, two and a blue for a 3-2 human detective. When it or another detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever detective you control is turned face up, you can draw a card. If you do that, you discard a card. This is actually better than it looks. Uh, at ETBs, you get to loot. Then every time you play a detective for the rest of the game, you get to loot. <laughs> it's not terrible. 1.75. Public Thoroughfare is a land that ETBs tap. You can tap it for a mana of any color, but when it ETBs, you have to sack it unless you tap an untapped artifact or land you control. The fact that you can tap an untapped artifact when this comes into play makes it, I think, really good. A common spire of industry for some purposes, right? Uh, I'll actually give this card a 2.5 like pretty easily, and it could be way better than that. It could actually be better than that. This taps for mana of any color. Of any color. That's, that's okay. Um, oh, baby. Push-pull. Okay. This is a, a split card. Uh, on the push half, it's one and ores of hybrids for a sorcery. Destroy target tapped creature. Pull is four and then two Rakdos hybrids for a sorcery. Put up to two target creature cards from a single graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. They gain haste till end of turn. Sack them at the beginning of the next end step. I think this card is absurd, but that's just me. Let me take a quick sip while you, you gather your thoughts and give me your opinions. Cause I don't know if you can tell, but my voice is shot <laughs> at this point already. My voice is just done. Um, I think this card is just a potential game winner. And if it doesn't win the game on the spot, it's also a removal spell. I, I just... card's really good. It can go on a mono black deck, by the way. It can go on a Boros. You can play this card on a Boros deck, which is really strange, but you can. Um, Are we doing draft power level? I'm talking a bit about draft power level. Like, I bring it up when it's worth it. But for this card, I am talking about standard. I am talking about a two-mana removal spell stapled to a card that says you win the game. Um, it hits any graveyard, not just your graveyard, it hits any graveyard. Um, but yeah, this is mostly standard where we're evaluating for. And I'm going to give this card, are you ready? This is probably, this is probably like my weirdest rating of the night. Like the, the, the biggest gap in terms of where you thought I might rate this card and the card, the rating I'm actually going to give it. I'm going to give this card a three and a half. Yeah, somebody called it. Fizzinator called it. This card's a three and a half. The Optinator wants a 3.75. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm, I just keep looking at this card. I just keep looking at this card. I, I, maybe I'm being subjective here, although there's no real objective way to do this, right? Um, it's a fool's errand to try that. But I, I really think that th this was this was almost number one on my sleepers list, and then I pulled it and decided to put it on the main list because I think it's that good. And I think it's that obviously good. I think this card is just kind of disgusting. And... I don't hear anybody talking about it, which, which is to me, that's, it's like the best far and away, the best split card that we got to see. I just, I don't know why it's not rare. I guess the entire cycle, I think, am I wrong? Is, is uncommon, but yeah, this is, this is a nasty card. This is a nasty magic card, dude. I like this. But Pyrotechnic performers up next one in a red for a three, two Vyashino assassin with disguise for a single red. Whenever it or another creature you control is turned face up, that creature deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. This is the card more than almost any that makes me want to try a disguise deck in standard. You know, just dome the opponent whenever you flip a dude up is pretty interesting. Um, but altogether, I just don't think that anything disguise is, is quite there. Not There might be one or two, but not a whole lot of things. And even if you, you, if you are building Disguise and Standard, you 100% play all four copies of this guy. And he might be your all-star card, but still, I just don't know that it's quite there. It seems a bit slow and just not great. So I'm going to give this card a two. Rakdos, Patron of Chaos, a six mana, four in Rakdos colors. Makes sense, right? For a 6-6 six, six legendary demon with Flample. At the beginning of your end step, target opponent may sacrifice two non-land, non-token permanents. If they don't, 
You draw two cards. So what this card is going to say, 94% uh, of the time, roughly, is six mana, six, six flample. If it makes it to the end of your turn, draw two. That's that's what this card is going to say most of the time. Uh, and it's probably good. <laughs> I love that it locks them out of sacking tokens. Like, nope, you can't sack tokens. Can't do, you have to sack real stuff that's on your side. Uh, that said, though, I still think this is kind of the quintessential... Six mana, six, six flample that looks good but doesn't see play because it costs six mana. So, and, you know, I can't really give this more than a two and a half, but boy, it's tempting. <laughs> Super is. But uh, Rakish Scoundrel is four mana. Two, a green and a black for a three, three elf rogue with DT. And when a DTBs or his turn face up, target creature gains indestructible till end of turn. You can disguise it for six mana, which is too much. Uh, 1.75. Reasonable doubt. One and a blue from it for an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays too. Suspect up to one target creature. So we got this. And we got Mana Leak. <laughs> Just in the same set. I wonder if control is any good in the limited environment. I bet it is. Um, we got this in like a hard counter too. So not bad. But still, uh, I, when you see a card like this, you have to give it like a two. Uh, and possibly sometimes even more than that, but I just don't think suspect is the best thing in the world uh, in terms of gravy. So just a two. Reckless, reckless detective. It's two mana. It's one, it's one in a red and he's so reckless. He's a zero three devil detective. And whenever he attacks, you may sacrifice an artifact to discard a card. If you do, draw a card and reckless detective. Reckless detective. It's plus two plus so. Until in the turn there. You're too reckless detective. But um, honestly, I'm not sure this card actually. Sorry, I'm not sure this card actually goes anywhere, but I want it to. This, this is almost a sleeper, but too many people are talking about it. <laughs> I think just because I did the bit, and now everybody wants it to be a good card. But I'm pretty sure it's not actually super playable in standard. But, you know, drawing a card by sac from, by, you know, when you sacrifice a blood token or something like that seems really good in Anvil. But I'm not sure that you can really use your opportunity cost like that. I don't know that you have the slots for this in Anvil. Um, very tight deck list that's really on the fringes already, and I don't know if it wants to add a card like this. So, I uh, regrettably have my doubts about RD, but I have to say his name like that, or I have to do the I have to say it uh, sing songy. <laughs> but, you know, I have my doubts, but I do think he's a really cool designed card, and there's there's sleeper in this thing somewhere. So, I'll give it a two and stay at that, and continue making bits whenever I run across him for the rest of my life. Red herring. Is one in a red for a 2-2 artifact creature. He's a clue fish with haste. One fish, two fish, red fish, clue fish. He's haste, and he attacks each combat of fable. You can pay two, sack him to draw a card because he's a clue. So a valley dasher, you can sack to draw a card. You can't do that with valley dasher. You just have to run him into combat, and he dies. <laughs> so it's technically strictly better than that card. It's also an artifact, so it can't be like go for the throated, but... A 2-mana two 2-2 two, two haste is something you sometimes pay attention to for aggro, but I just think we have better options. All that said, 2.25. I'm serious. <laughs> Reenact the crime. Reenact the crime. So earlier, when we were talking about blue players, and how the guy in my uh, comment section was like, I'm a blue player, I play control, and I don't like this set. There's nothing in it. It's like, you got a mana leak. First of all, you got a mana leak in this set. So, there's that. But you also got the new factor fiction. And you also got this. <laughs> you also got this card. This is four mana, one in three blue for an instant. Exile target non-land card in a graveyard that was put there from anywhere this turn. Copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. I'm not about to overrate this card. I'm not about to do that. But I am about to give it a three. This card's a three. Is it hard? Is it a trap? Is this card a trap? Is it a trap? I think some people would say it is. I think some people might say this card is a trap. Do you play it in your deck? Do you play this card in your deck? Is it worth doing that? Yeah, four mana is a huge amount. Exactly. Exactly. Four mana is so much. However, <laughs> however, I could see a two of this. Demir control. Esper control. Yeah. I could see this all day. All day, baby. I like this. I like this. And I'm not going to give it the like three and a half I want to give it. Because I honestly think that would be dangerously overrating the card. But I don't think that a three is necessarily an overration. It's a trap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the casting cost being three blue. Oh, boombox, I don't care about that. 
we were playing Invoke Despair in three color decks like four months ago. Never, never forget that. A couple of years back, we were playing Goblin Chain Whirler in three color decks. A couple of months ago, we were playing, you know, Invoke Despair in three color decks. Three blue is nothing. Three blue is nothing. <laughs> it's nothing, dude. So I, 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 I think the card's fine. I honestly think this card is more than fine. And I'll give it a slightly inflated in some people's eyes views. Um, in some people's view, I'm sure. A three. I think this card is dangerous. Super dangerous. Relive the past is up next. Seven mana, five, a green, and a white for a sorcery. Return up to one artifact card, up to one land card, up to one target non-aura enchantment card from your graveyard to the field. There are now five, five elemental creature types, or cards, in addition to their other types. So you get 15 power for seven mana. <laughs> it's not bad. I need a reason to play this over a card like Brilliant Restoration, which just brings all the artifacts and enchantments back. Um, and I think it's just better. I think Brilliant Restoration is a better card. I've been playing it forever. I've resolved it a hundred times or more by now in my life. I love the card. Um, and I'm just not sure that 15 power is worth it. I'm really not. I'm not. But I do like it. I think the idea of bringing back Portal to Phyrexia as your artifact and literally anything else. Literally any two other things. Um, but Portal makes them sacrifice three guys and you have two. You have three five fives. So you have 15 power and you just make them sack three dudes. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. So I think a ramp deck might want to do something with this. But even then, you have to put stuff in your yard in that ramp deck. And you go, uh, uh, and it's just, you know, it's just, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. When you could just be casting a track set and going home. So I have I have some issues, some a few problems. So I'm just going to give this card a 2.5. I think the power is there. But I also think you might just have better options. All things can, and those don't see play, you know. But repeat offender is two mana, one and a black for a two one human assassin. Uh, for two and a black, if it's suspected, you can put a counter on it. Otherwise, suspect it. Um, fine mana sink, I guess, and limited sort of a little bit. It takes uh, nine mana for this to not die to a two two in combat. So <laughs> that's not very good. One point two five. Repulsive Mutation, the other counter spell people are talking about in this set. X and a blue and, uh, well, excuse me, blue, green, and X for an instant. Put X plus, plus, uh, plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Then counter up to one target spell unless its controller pays mana equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. I don't like this as much as, well, the mana leak, obviously. It's nowhere near as good as the mana leak. I mean, it requires that you have a creature in play at all. And that is easier said than done but maybe in simic tempo you do always have a creature in play problem is if i'm in simic tempo and i just pay two mana for this half the time it's going to be a worse make disappear because i had to pay more awkward mana for it um however you know mid and late game this will be a, a a mana leak that you know counters it's, it's like a clash of wills or a power sink that um not only counters the spell late into the game for that matter but um, also makes one of your dudes theoretically really big. So I just feel like the longer the game goes on, the better this tends to get. Um, is that where Simic Tempo Mages want to be? Probably not. Hey, Fibble Thip is in this art. I just noticed Fibble Thip is in this art. <laughs> hey, buddy. That's that's where you turned up this time around. Um, but all things considered, I do think it's a playable counter spell in the right deck. Um, I just don't think it's... I'm not, I'm not quite as, like, gaga about it as I've seen some people be. It's not the marquee counter spell in the set by any means. So I'll give it a 2.75. No, we'll give it a 2.5. I'll give this card a 2.5. I do think it's strong. I do think it's strong. Note, too, that you don't have to be countering a spell. You can just be putting counters on a guy at instant speed. That might matter to blow an opponent out in combat. The card does a couple of very distinct things, and I like that versatility i like the scalability those are all things i really like so a 2.5 is a generous score to be honest um because it's a good counter spell it just has to find a home and all of that so i just you know in terms of tempo i'm not sure anything necessarily needs it now one thing i will say and i wonder if chad is saying this right now um because i haven't looked over there yet for this card but toxic right because it counters it, it targets a creature you control but also counters a spell and you're usually holding up mana anyway in that deck. So maybe it does have a home and that home is Bant Toxic. And you can make an argument after the last couple of tournaments 
that Bant Toxic is one of the top three decks in the format right now. So if it gets a new toy, that's a good card, right? Two point five. It's <laughs> too expensive. Yeah. Counter a board wipe and beefier dudes. Yeah, I mean against this against a potential sunfall, this does look really good, right? <laughs> this does look pretty good. And it's not a bad card. Rift Burst Hellion is seven mana. Five, a red and a green for a six, seven Hellion with reach. Disguise for six mana, normal card, 1.5. Rope is a single green mana for a clue equipment. It equips for three mana. You can pay two sack and draw a card. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two, has reach, can't be blocked. By more than one creature, as I failed to point out in the uh, spoiler video for this card, but everyone in the comments section pointed out and right, we were right to do so. You can put this on a suspected creature and it's unblockable. Look at there. Howdy doody. That seems pretty good in draft, but, you know, I just give this a 1.75 like all these other things, except lead pipe. I think I gave that a 2. I gave it a 1.75. I can't remember. Rot Farm Mortipede is up next. It's a 4 mana. A 3 and a black for a 3-4 insect. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your yard, Mortipede gets plus 1, plus 0, gains menace and lifelink till end of turn. So I want there to be a big combo where one by one you remove cards from your graveyard for free for whatever reason with whatever, you know, outlet. And suddenly this guy becomes like a, you know, 82, 82, 83 lifelink. Actually, he'd just be an 82, 4 lifelink um, with menace. But that's never going to happen. Eh, 1.5. Rubble Belt Braggart is 5 mana for a 5-5 five, five Vashino Warrior. When it attacks, if it's not suspected, you can suspect it. 1.5. Rubble Belt Maverick is a single green mana for a 1-1. One, one, and when an ETB, Surveil 2. Pay a green and exile it from your yard to put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on a creature at uh, sorcery speed. This card is a 2.75. That's all there is to it. Draven Inspector was a 2.75, right? This is a 2.75. 2.75 all day, baby. All day. One mana, ETB Surveil 2. And, and gravy? And cheap gravy that makes my creatures big? Well, not big, but you know. Even after he dies, he can put his power on something later. That, man... They didn't even have to put this card. They didn't have to put this ability on the card for it to be like a playable magic card. But for a single mana, this ETB trigger, for a single mana, this ETB trigger, massive, massive, good card, good card. But anyway, Rune Brand Juggler is up next. Black and a red for a 2-2 human shaman with an ETB. Suspect a creature you don't control if you want to. You can pay five mana and sack a suspected creature of your own. Wait, it's a cre why do I keep messing that up? When an ETB suspect up to one creature you do control, <laughs> you can pay five and sacrifice a suspected creature to have a creature give minus five, minus five till end of turn. Um, eh, limited little two drop that can be a removal spell later. It's fine, but just 1.75. Sample collector is three mana, two and a green for a two, three troll detective. When it attacks, you may collect evidence three. When you do, put a plus, plus, plus one counter on target creature you control. It's just fine. 1.5. Sanctuary wall is one and a white for a zero four wall with defender. You may two and a white tap it to tap a creature. You may put a stun counter on that creature. If you do that, you put a stun counter on the wall. Yeah, eh, 1.5. <laughs> a fine blocker and limited, but no, 1.5. Sanguine Savior is three mana, one, a white, and a black for a 2 1 vamp cleric with flying and lifelink, and you disguise it for two ores off hybrids. When it's turn face up, another target creature you control gains lifelink until end of turn. At the beginning of the video, I was not doing great with my reading. I was tripping up. I'm doing a lot better now. Either way, card's just fine. 1.75. Limited playable, but still not even really that much of a banger in that environment. Sanitation Automaton is 2 mana. For a 2-1 artifact creature, it's a construct. When an ETB Surveil 1, it's a Roomba. They put a Roomba on a magic card, and it's actually not that god-awful. Surveil 1 when an ETB is a fine little line of text. So, I will give this a two <laughs> but honestly that's that's a quarter point too high scene of the crime was on my sleepers list this is not only an artifact land it's also a clue etb's tapped you can pay you can tap it and add a colorless you can tap it and uh, tap an untapped creature you control to add a mana of any color that's spring leaf drum or you can pay two and tap it and two and sack it and draw a card i was just talking about how my reading's getting better here i'm doing okay i'm in a groove nope apparently not and I literally just read this card without looking at it yesterday to record the video. Where <laughs> so I don't know how how that was so bad, but either way, this this land strikes me as very very good. <laughs> it ETVs tapped, um, and you do have to tap down a creature to get the any color mana out of it. But it's an artifact land. 
not only is it an artifact land, it's a clue. So like it matters for all the stuff that wants clues in play. It matters for all the stuff that wants artifacts in play. And artifact lands are always great for those. It's a free artifact. It's a free clue. It's a clue that costs you no mana to get on the table in the first place. And I really like that. In the meantime, it can occasionally fix your mana to like this incredible degree. So I like this card. I will give this a 2.75. I think it's pretty good. Season Consultant is one and a white for a 1-3 human detective. Whenever you attack with three or more boys, Season Consultant gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. So a two mana, three, three, sometimes if you're aggro enough, 1.75. Shady Informant is five mana, three in Rakdos for a 4-T... A 4-2 Ogre Rogue. <laughs> I just like saying Ogre Roger. When it dies, it deals 2 damage to any target. You can flip it up from Disguise for 2 and 2 Rakdos Hybrids. Normal card. Not actually super great, although the damage to any target is kind of alright and limited, but still. I have to give this a 1.5. Sharp-Eyed Rookie, though, is 2 mana, 1 in a green for a 2-2 Human Detective with Vigilance. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if its power is greater than Sharp-Eyed Power, Sharp-Eyed Rookie's power... Or its toughness is greater than Shipeard Rookie's toughness. God, so much text to say something super simple. Then you put a plus one, plus one counter on Sharp-Eyed Rookie and investigate. There's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> but it's kind of a form of evolve um, that not only makes the creature bigger, but gives, you know, an investigate trigger, which is pretty good. But I put this in the same camp as like a Gala Greeter or a Kirion Beast Caller, although it could theoretically be better than those creatures. Um, not a bad card at all here. I'll give it a 2.75. We're in that territory. Shock is up next. Quintessential red removal spell that isn't named Lightning Bolt. A single red mana for a spell that is Lightning Bolt, but only two-thirds of Lightning Bolt. It's it's good. You give Shock a 2.25 and you move on. Slice from the Shadows is X for a black. X and a black for an instant. <laughs> That's the way I wanted to say it. This spell can't be countered. This includes the ward ability. Target creature gets minus X, minus X till end of turn. Eh, it's uh, fine. We already have Black Sun's Twilight in Standard, as well as, what is it, March of Wretched Sorrow. They're both much, much better than this, although we'll always appreciate the can't be countered line of text, you know. All that said, though, I'm just going to give this a two and move on. Slime Against Humanity. Wait, what? How? What do you... What do you do with this card? Um, two and a green for a sorcery. Create a zero, zero green ooze with trample. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is two plus the total number of cards you own in exile and in your graveyard that are oozes or are named Slime Against Humanity. That can have any number of cards named Slime Against Humanity. So this isn't just a plague rats or a card like it. Persistent petitioners, whatever. Um, as somebody pointed out in the comments section, I want to give them credit. I didn't, I didn't come up with this, although I should have because it's pretty obvious. And I feel like a dink for not coming up with this. But once you really think about this card, the difference between it and like a ravenous rats or a petitioners is that they can wrath your board. They can wrath your board. And then the next rats you play is relatively small, you know. But even if they fare well, even if they sunfall and exile your board, the next slime against humanity you play will still be a really big trample guy. And all the other cards like this don't really have that going for them. So that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. That even if your opponent can wipe your entire board, all you have to do is cast one copy of this card and suddenly you have what? You know, 6-6, six, six, <laughs> you know, 7-7 seven, seven Trampler or whatever it is. Um, so that's okay. <laughs> that's actually kind of okay. Although not as alarming as I think it is for some people. I've seen a lot of people say this card is like the sleeper. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yeah, 38 slimes, 22 lands. Let's go. Could be. Could be. Yeah, and work the synergy with Ozolith. That's true. I hadn't even thought about that yet. So, interesting card here. I don't think it's actually great, though. But I think there's a chance this is more than a meme. I'll give it a 2.25. Slimy Dual Leech. I didn't actually cover this during spoiler season. It's four mana, three and a black for a two, four leech at the beginning of combat on your turn. A creature you control with power two or less gets plus one plus zero and gains death touch until end of turn. I do kind of like the text box on this card, but I'm still just going to give it a 1.75. Gnarling or Snarling Gorehound is here. A black mana for a 1-1 one, one dog with menace. And whenever another creature with power two or less ETBs under your control, surveil one. Nifty little triggered ability here. I'm going to give this a 2.25. I don't think that it's amazing, but... It is a card I really, 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 really like. <laughs> like a lot, but let's try and be, you know, 
objective about it, but a one, one menace is going to get in a lot of the game, like for three or four turns, this is fairly likely to get in. Um, and then, you know, surveil one, like two, three times of the course of the game. Telling you, there's something to it. But Soul Innervation is up next. Another card I really like that probably isn't very good. Four mana, three and a black for an enchantment with flash. When it ETBs, target creature gets minus four, minus four to end of turn. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, creature cards specifically, leave your graveyard, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. So the idea, I guess, is to pair this up with like Lion Sash and Standard or Scavenging Use in formats that have access to Scavenging Use. And then for one mana apiece, you get to get creature cards out of your yard so that's a few activations a turn that's a lot of life drain in that situation this card's also a removal spell your lion sash is getting huge is this interaction powerful enough no i'm gonna give this card a 2.25 and play it a lot but still just give it a 2.25 soul search is a black and a uh, white for a sorcery an opponent reveals their hand you choose a non-land from it exile the card if the card's mana value is one or less create a one one black and white spirit creature token with flying so Pilfer, that's harder to cast, but it does have the ex the upside of exiling the card from their hand. I think two mana exile any card from your opponent's hand is almost playable in standard. On the occasions where you get a 1-1 flyer, it's really good, but we don't have that many problem one drops. And, you know, obviously by the time you've played your uh, second land, your opponent has had a chance to play their one drop already. So I guess there's that, <laughs> you know. All things considered, though, I'm going to give this card a 2.25 as well. Just the first line of text is pretty good. Really, the first up to exile the card is pretty good. It's for collect evidence here. Steam Core Scholar is up next. Three mana, two, and a blue for a 2-2 weird detective with flying and vigilance. When it ETBs, draw two, then discard two cards unless you discard an instant or sorcery or a creature card with flying. This card's a three. Um, all day, man, all day, this card's a three. This card has a chance to put two cards in your hand while only losing one. It's always going to draw two. It's not like a, oh, choose to discard some cards and then draw that many. No, always draw two when it ETBs. Sometimes you'll only have to discard one. Sometimes you'll be perfectly happy discarding the two. And aside from that, it's a wind drake with the upside of also slamping vigilance onto the card. So I just like everything about this, man. It attacks, it protects you know, because of the vigilance, it doesn't die to wandering emperor. It actually gets through for damage a couple of turns. You know, it did get you the cards. It's, <laughs> it's a body that lets you draw two and discard two on turn three. That's a fable of the mirror breaker. And it doesn't do all the other stuff fable does, but for certain decks, this could easily be a piece they want to play. So I'm giving this card a three hundred percent. We'll move on to Sudden Setback, which is really tough, honestly, to score. Four mana for an instant. The owner of target spell or non-land permanent puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Somebody asked if I misread this card for the sleeper video, and I had to be like, no. <laughs> Those are the words that came out of my mouth. <laughs> so I don't know what you... Hmm. Um, but yeah, the card is powerful. This card is deceptively and yet also obviously powerful, depending on how many times you've played against a memory lapse in your life, so... Or remand or whatever. It's even better than remand. Um, it's a good, it's a, it, this is decent, but four mana is a bit much. Four mana is slightly too much, but still, uh, a card like this will annoy you a lot more than you think it's going to annoy you, annoy you. So I'll give it a 2.25 and not really explain myself. It should just be a two. This should just be a two. But I'm saying 2.25 because like this might surprise some people. This card is kind of fine. Sumala Sentry is two mana, a green and a white for a 1-3 Elf Archer with Reach. Whenever a face down permanent you control is turned face up, put a plus one plus one counter on it and a plus one plus one counter on Sentry. Neat. <laughs> Limited playable little guy, 1.75, you know. Surveillance Monitor, four mana, three and a blue for a 3-3 Vidalkin Detective. When it ETBs, you may collect evidence four. Whenever you collect evidence, you get a Thopter. Neat. Whenever you collect evidence, get a Thopter is going to be cool and limited. So 1.75. Suspicious Detonation, four and a red for a sorcery that costs three less to cast if you've sacked an artifact this turn. Spell can't be countered. It deals four damage to target creature. Limited play, roll, removal. Probably zero play in standard whatsoever. Voltage Surge is better anyway. 1.75. 10th District Hero is one and a white for a 2-3 human. You can pay one and a white and collect evidence two to have it become a human detective with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, and you get vigilance. For three mana, you can collect evidence four and have a 10th District Hero 
become a legendary creature named Maleva the Stalwart. It has base power and toughness 5-5, five, five, and it gains other creatures you control have indestructible, but of course you can only do this if it's already detective. So, seven total mana invested into this thing. For a 5-5 five, five Vigilance, other guys you control have indestructible, but it only costs you two mana up front for a 2-3, which is an okay stat line. I like cards like Evolve Sleeper, but I think I like Evolve Sleeper a lot more than this. I don't know how much play this ends up seeing, ultimately, despite how attractive the card does look. She does look like a pretty good magic card, but ultimately I'm just not sure we're in the kind of standard that wants her. I'm really not, so I will say there's a mono-white sort of mid-range deck that plays, you know, Wandering Emperor, Wedding Announcement, and a few other, like, creatures, you know, creature tokens and whatnot that may want a card like this, but even then, I just don't think they find spots for it, so very mana intensive, and for the mana you're paying for it on each mode, you're actually getting a good creature, right, but I still just don't think it's quite right, so I'm gonna give this a 2.25 and hope that it's a little bit better than that, you know. Tesa, Opulent Oligarch is up next. One, a white and a black for a 2-3 Legendary Human Advisor with DT. At the beginning of your end step, investigate for each opponent who lost life this turn. Whenever a clue you control is put into a yard from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying for whatever reason this ability only triggers once each turn. If I pay 4 mana to sacrifice 2 clues and draw 2, I really ought to be able to get 2 one ones for my 4 mana investment, but only once each turn, because... What if you sacrifice, what if you find a way to get like 50 clues out and then you have some kind of free sacrifice outlet for your clues and you sacrifice all your clues and get a bunch of one ones and then you have a thing that gives all your one ones haste. It's like, okay, if I did all that, then I should be able to win the game. Why does it only trigger once a turn? Like it really, it really bugs me on this card in particular. Um, sometimes I get it, but I really... I think it's very stupid <laughs> that, that, that that line of text is on this card. But still, it is <clears throat> a death touch creature for a reasonable cost that investigates every, on average, other turn, you know, um, and occasionally also fills your board with dudes, but doesn't actually fill your board with dudes. Just once a turn. Why did you do that? Why did you, why did they do that? <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> even if this did, even if this did, give you a 1-1 one, one whenever you sacked a clue and just didn't have that last line of text, I still wouldn't score it that high because it's not going to investigate every turn. The most, For the most part, I'm fairly certain that this Tesa is going to read 3 mana, 2, 3, death touch. None of the other words actually exist. You know? Um, if it is investigating for you, you are probably already doing okay in that game. I will say that, like, one investigate every two turns for, for, for three and a half turns or whatever. <laughs> like, it could be worse. I think you could look at this as, like, a tireless tracker or something. Um, but I think you'd be wrong to do that. But all that said, I've been bagging on her a little bit. She's she's great. I, everybody loves Tesa. Um, and this isn't a terrible magic card. It's really not. You know, board presence and theoretically drawn cards all in the same card for playing magic. Right? You're playing magic. You're just playing magic. Your opponent lost life. You played magic. Here's a clue. Um, you sacrifice that clue. You played magic. Here's a 1-1. One, one. Like, these are good things. So, I'm going to give this card a 2.75, but I'm a little I'm a little weary of it. Because I think a lot of the time it's just going to be a 3-mana, 2-3 death touch. And not a whole lot else. Um, the chase is on with this thing. 3-mana, 2, and a red for an instant. A car, a target creature gets plus 3, plus 0, gains first strike to end of turn investigate limited combat trick cost a little bit too much honestly 1.25 pride of the whole clade is 11 mana but not really for a 215 legendary crocodile elk turtle it costs x less to cast where x is the total toughness of creatures you control and it has defender you pay two and two blue and until end of turn a creature you control gets plus one plus zero gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player draw cards equal to its toughness and can attack as though it didn't have defender i actually think this card is uh, kind of bad I do. I mean, you can cast it for a single green mana. It's possible to do that, but you're probably waiting until, you know, turn five or six or whatever, <laughs> like best case scenario in standard to get this for a single green mana. And let's say you do cast it for a single green mana on turn four because you're some kind of genius, you know? What'd you get? What'd you get? You got a two power creature and the privilege to spend four mana to maybe draw cards. 
I just don't think it's that good, man. Two. Seriously. They went this way is two and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic, put it on the battlefield, tap, shuffle, and then investigate. I think this is better than it looks, but still won't see any actual play, too. Thinking cap is a single mana for an artifact. It's an equipment. You can equip it for three, and the creature gets plus one, plus two, and you can equip a detective for a single mana, apparently. I mean, I get how it makes sense flavorfully, but I really don't understand how they would have an easier time wearing a hat. Like a normal person is like, how do you get this hat on? It costs me more resources to put this hat on. But detective's like, I... I know this hat well. Actually, maybe it does work that way. I don't know. Card's bad. 1.25. Uh, just bits are fun. 10 Street Gossip is 4 mana. 2, a red and a green for a 4-4 four, four Vashino Artificer with Vigilance. You can tap it and add green and red, but you can only spend that mana to cast face down stuff or to turn creatures. A face up. It's not good. Um, It's 4 mana, 4-4 four, four Vigilance, so it's kind of neat. I still say it looks like he's talking to Joyra, and I want to know what's up with that. Are you talking to Joyra? Are you talking to Joyra right now? But as far as the actual car goes, uh, 1.75. Tulsimir, Midnight's Light. He doesn't look anything like the Professor this time. He's five mana, two a green, and two white for a 3-2 legendary elf scout with lifelink. When it ETBs, create Voha Fenstalker, if that's not the most, like, Dungeons and Dragons name. A legendary 5-5 green and white wolf creature token with trample. Whenever a wolf you control attacks, if Tulsimir also attacked this combat, a creature an opponent controls blocks that wolf this combat if able. A lot of words for a very expensive thing it does put eight power on the table on two dudes the wolf has trample you can make stuff run into the wolf if tulsimir also attacks but i actually kind of don't think tulsimir will be attacking that often he does have lifelink if you lose your tulsimir you get to keep your wolf it's not terrible but five men is an awful lot of investment for just like two bodies it's just two guys you're five mana what do you do i'm two guys can you be is there any way you could win me the game no. <laughs> so I don't know. I just It's okay. I give it a 2.25. Tomic. Wielder of Law. Three mana. One, a white, and a black for a 2-4 legendary human advisor. Affinity for planeswalkers. Flying and vigilance. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures. Just attacks with creatures. If two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or planeswalkers you control. That opponent loses three life. You draw a card. Some of my favorite flavor in terms of the art direction in the entire set. He appears to be wearing Raul Zarek's like headband. And if I'm not mistaken, he was recently married to Raul Zarek, which is why he has this little headband on his wrist to remind him like, oh yeah, I'm married to that guy. <laughs> Who am I married to? Oh yeah, it's, a, oh, yeah, it's Raul. I like that guy. He's nice. Um, so I, I do like the flavor on this, but ultimately... I love the function, man. I think this card is really good. Like, I think this card is half busted, man. I really do. Three mana, two, four. Decent stats. Three mana, two, four. Flying Vigilance. Three mana, two, four. Flying Vigilance. Oh, my God. And if your opponent ever makes a mistake of playing magic against you, they take a bolt to the face and you get to draw. That's really good. <laughs> I'm serious here. This card is a three and a half. It just dies to removal, and I'm like 100% aware of that. But so does Shieldred. And this costs one, sometimes two less <laughs> than a Shieldred. This is a relatively cheap card. It has pretty incredible stats when you factor in the fact that it has two keyword abilities for the mana cost. Um, unboltable for what that's worth. Uncut downable for what that's worth. These things are worth a lot. And again, again, my real my real thing that, that blows my mind with this card if your opponent plays magic against you, they you get to draw cards and they just take bolts. Three and a half. I'm sorry, dude. Three and a half. That's so good. <laughs> so, so good. Topiary Panther is up next. Six mana. Yeah, yeah, this thing eats mono red. <laughs> Auction gods. I like the way you think. Topiary Panther is six mana, four and two green for a six, five. Plant Cat with Trample. It also has basic land cycling, one and a grin. So this card's pretty good. I'll give it a two, but that's about as much as I can give it. I do think it might have places to go in standard, though. Basic land cycling is decent. And I already talked about this in the sleeper video, but like Shigeki and Domain Ramp might have potential slots for this. Torch the Witness, X and a red for a sorcery. Deals twice X damage to target creature. If XS damage was dealt to a creature this way, investigate. That's okay. Decently played, lim playable limited removal. We give those 1.75. Toxin Analysis is a single black mana for an instant. A creature, that well, target creature, gains death touch and lifelink till end of turn. 
Investigate. Um, eh. It's one mana for a clue. <laughs> a one. I actually think there's probably stuff you can do with this card. Probably fun stuff you can do with this card, right? But... One. Uh, treacherous Greed. I will say, I will say this. Last, the only thing I want to say about this card in terms of, like, speculation is that, you know, there might be creatures that deal a little bit of damage to, like, every creature on the table. Like a Goblin Chain Whirler, you know? If you resolve Goblin Chain Whirler, um... While its ability is on the stack, you could play Toxin Analysis, and since he does one damage to every creature, and this makes him gain Death Touch, suddenly every creature on the table dies. Right? So you, you could you could do the, you, it's a thing you could do, <laughs> right? But it's still one. It's it's not these cards aren't very good. Uh, Treacherous Greed is one a white and a black for an instant. As an additional cost to cast, it sack a creature that dealt damage this turn. Draw three cards. Each opponent loses three life. You gain three life. I actually might shock you to let you know. I don't like this card that much. Um, I don't. I don't love the restriction of having to have dealt damage. I don't love that. It's not just like a. Oh God, what do we call it? Spectacle. It's not just like cast it only if you've dealt damage. You actually have to sack the thing that got in for you, which I don't love. Um, and it costs three mana. I mean, it's instant speed, but you're probably going to be casting on your turn, right? Because <laughs> the creature had to deal damage. And I guess you could tap a creature and deal damage on your opponent's turn. Or tap Thermo Alchemist in your Mardu deck. But I just think then you're kind of getting really silly, aren't you? So I don't know. I, I want to like this, but it just seems very, very awkward to me. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was better than I'm gauging it here. But at time of recording, I can't give it more than a two. Tristani Three Whispers is a good magic card. A green, a white, and a green, white hybrid for a 4 4 legendary dryad. Pay one and a green to have a creature gain death touch until end of turn. Till end of turn. Bleh. You can pay a green and a white to have a creature gain vigilance till end of turn, or you can pay two and a white to have a creature gain double strike till end of turn. Um, I can obviously read have a creature gain. I don't know why I just messed it up so bad the first time I tried to read it. Uh, this card's great. Three mana, 4 4 with no downsides whatsoever. Um, and three very, very good keyword or, 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 you know, activated abilities. Really interesting in a deck like Simic Cauldron, too, because, you know, the Cauldron in play, basically any of your abilities or creatures can have these abilities, which is <laughs> kind of nice, <laughs> you know. Um, but just by itself, a four mana or a three mana four four that helps itself out in so many ways while also being able to help your other creatures out. Just a more than solid magic card with literally no negative. There's no negative part to this card whatsoever. Um... I can't even say, like, what about opportunity costs? Because there's not really a whole lot of other three-mana creatures you'd want to play in your Selesnia deck that are any better than this, to be honest. So, is there opportunity cost? <laughs> I just have to give this card, um, like, a 3.25, you know? It's in that neighborhood. It's at least a three, but probably a three and a quarter. Tunnel Tipster is two mana, one and a green for a woman mole scout. In the beginning of your end step, if a face down creature entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Tunnel Tipster. You can also, this is my uh, New Zealand accent. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Tunnel Tipster. You can also tap it and add a green mana. It's a terrible, terrible New Zealand accent. Uh, the card's a 1.75. Unauthorized exit, yeah? It's two mana. It's one and a blue for an instant. Return a non land permanent to its owner's hand. Surveil one. You will never see play while. Um, fading hope is in the format. So it's fine though. It's not a terrible card, but I'm just going to give it a uh, 1.75 under city eliminator is five mana three and two. Oh, this is, this card starts with you. We're really close three and two blue. I guess the last couple of cards have three and two black rather for a three, three Gorgon assassin. When an ETBs, you can sacrifice an artifact or a creature. When you do exile a creature, an opponent controls uh 1.75 undercover crocodile. Crocodelf is a six mana, four green and a blue for a five, five elf crocodile detective. When it deals combat damage to a player, investigate disguise for five. Why doesn't it have trample? If it had trample, it could investigate more easily. It's five, five. It should have trample. This guy should have trample. Uh, 1.5. You, you lose a quarter of a point for 1.25. You lose a quarter of a point for not having trample. Undergrowth Recon, one and two green for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. A little bit slower than you want it to be, actually, but still pretty good. So I'm going to give this card a 2.5, which doesn't sound like it's that good, but it's still going to be playable in some decks. I think mostly commander decks want this. In standard, if you play it on turn three, you're probably not going to actually 
be using it until next turn. And you had to have set it up too. You had to have set it up to actually use it on your upkeep turn four. The problem is, okay, you spent your turn three, your entire turn three playing this. Turn four, you finally get value out of it. Tap land, <laughs> whoops. So you don't even get to feel the value from this until two turns after you play it. And I just cannot stop thinking about that. So I'm just going to give this a 2.5. And uh, yeah, unscrupulous agent is two mana, one on a black for a one one elf detective. When it ETBs, an opponent exiles a card from their hand. What do you give Skullcap Snail, or AKA strictly better Burglar Rat with an actual relevant creature type? Uh, two, you give it a two. Unyielding Gatekeeper, one and a white for a three two elephant cleric with disguise, one and a white. When Unyielding Gatekeeper is turned face up, exile another target non land permanent. If you controlled it, return it to the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, its controller creates a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. Of all the disguise things, this is close to the best. It might not be the best, but it's close. It hits any non-land permanent, and it's not the kind of thing where like, okay, so when they kill Unyielding Gatekeeper, they get their guy back. They don't. They just get a 2-2 forever. They never get their thing back. That's, that's pretty good, right? But I still don't think this dude is that amazing. I, you know... You have to pay three mana to get him out in the first place. Now on turn four, if you play a land, you can disguise this dude instant speed and still have two mana left over to do other stuff. So I don't think he's like the, I don't think he's bad. I really don't think he's bad. Um, and obviously he can flicker your guys too. And I want to at least point that out. But, um, and a two mana three, two is like not the worst floor in the world, but I'm still just going to end up giving this guy a 2.5. I don't think he's ultimately standard playable. But again, I would like to be wrong about that. The fact that this isn't just another Brutal Cathar, Fiend Hunter, Banisher Priest, they get their guy back eventually, all they have to do is levy removal spell at this. The fact that it isn't that really excites me, you know, just any old non-land permanent and they get a 2-2 and that's it forever. Yeah, that seems okay, but there's more setup than it looks like, you know, it's cost five mana to actually do that. And five mana destroy target non-land permanent. They get a two-two is bad. That's bad. That'd be a bad magic card. So I'm just, I'm not like convinced. Urgent necropsy is four mana, two a black and a green for an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, collect evidence X, where X is the total mana value of permanence the spell targets. Destroy up to one artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and up to one target planeswalker. So four different permanent types. You can hit all of them you know, casualties of war style, if you can collect enough evidence. I think this card is good. I think the fact that it's instant speed, four mana is a bit much, but usually it can blow up two permanents, like, fairly easily. I think there will be too many games. However, there might be too many games where you draw this on turn four and you don't have anything in your yard yet. So you just drew a blank card which is bad, <laughs> especially on the most important turn in standard magic, standard four or in standard magic turn four. The most important turn in, in standard is either three or four. It's one or the other. Um, so yeah, one of the most important turns in standard, you, you have the mana to play it, but the card is effectively blank. <laughs> and I think that's actually going to happen in too many games, but this is a spell for slightly later in the game. This is a spell for a mid range or control deck to cast on turn five, turn six, turn seven, and, you know, two or three for one, the opponent and put itself in a much better position. And through that lens, I think the card is great. So I'm going to give this card a 2.5 again. Not only is it a removal spell, there's kind of a ceiling on those, but it's a removal spell. You do have to facilitate. And I think if you only take one thing out with it, then you didn't do it right. And it wasn't very good. You know, removing, you know, one for one removal that costs four mana. That's bad. That's not very good. So, but two for one removal that costs four, we can start talking in our mid range decks. So I'll give the card a 2.5 and I hope that it's even better than that. Vanifar evolved enigma up next four mana two a green and a blue for a three, four legendary elf ooze wizard. And at the beginning a foos wizard at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one cloak a card from your hand or put a plus one plus one counter on each colorless creature you control. So this can put five power into play the turn it comes into play, but it's going to cost you a card out of your hand. And every turn it's going to cost you a card out of your hand. This makes me think of the Glissa that for five mana that we got just recently. I say recently, it was in like Mom Aftermath or something. But it's like five mana and at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can incubate two um, twice. And I kind of like that card. It never really busted through. I've seen it in boards for Golgari once or twice, but it never truly busted through. 
Vanifar reminds me of that. Uh, however, Vanifar doesn't put two permanents into play like Glissa does, and it requires cards from your hand, unlike Glissa, who just does the thing, right? So, like, later in the game, there's going to be situations where you have Vanifar, no cards in your hand, draw your card from the turn, and now you have to make a choice between getting your 2-2 two -two or playing a card. <laughs> you know, if you play the card, you don't get a 2-2, two -two, which is not great. Then your Vanifar didn't do anything. I'm, I've kind of soured on this card since I first read it. I didn't love it that much when I first read it, but now that I... You know, have had time to keep looking at it over and over and read it like seven or eight times at this point. I'm getting less and less excited about the prospect of this existing. I just don't think it's that great. It does create value the turn it comes into play, which I'm fine with. And it does snowball value. Eventually it needs to be removed or it does win the game, blah, blah, blah. That's all these, but I do feel like it's fairly easily removed. It doesn't attack very well by itself in this stand. It doesn't line up with much very well. So I'm just, I'm not too happy about the idea of this. I will give this a 2.25, even though, again, I want to go up to 2.5 on this, but I just feel like the quality of cards I've given 2.5 to tonight is slightly higher than this card. So 2.25 for now, I don't think it's actually that great, to be honest. Yeah, it does work with, that's true, it does work with the incubator tokens if you use the second mode on the card. Vein Ripper. Oh, man, this is where I this is where you can really tell that I am fighting as hard as I can to be objective, right? This is three and three black, six mana for a six, five vamp assassin with flying. Also has ward sack a creature. Whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. The super blood artist. It's twice a blood artist, but for some reason it costs three times a blood artist. Probably because it's a six, five flying ward sacrifice creature. They put a lot of extra stuff on this card. Ward sack a creature is dope. Ward sack a creature is actually really, really good, especially when you consider sometimes you might be playing against people that just don't have creatures. <laughs> if your opponent doesn't have a creature, they can't target this guy at all. Well, they, I mean, theoretically, they can target him. They just shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so, I really, I really, you, I mean, come on, man. Look, <laughs> the 65 of you who are still in here watching probably know me well enough to know that this is one of my favorite cards in the entire set. <laughs> From a commander perspective, for, you know, LSL core, and I want to play it in standard, but it's got six mana, man. It's got six mana, and theoretically doesn't really do diddly poop the turn it comes into play, right? So, I have to rate this card poorly. I have to rate this card like a 2.25, just like Vanifar, um, which definitely has applications, but I have to do that because we're talking about, like, constructed mostly standard pioneer modern play and stuff. And I just, I don't think it's going to get there, man. I don't, but if this were a commander list, this would be a four. This would be a four. It goes in every commander deck for the rest of time that has a blood artist in it. It's the ultimate blood artist. It's going in all of my commander decks. I'm ordering one as soon as the set comes out. If we do an, I spent five or $10 on the set. You can bet if it's cheap enough, it's going to be in the batch. I love this card, <laughs> but again, sometimes in life you have to try to be objective when we're talking about like actual constructed playability, 2.25. Vengeful Creeper is five mana. Four and a green for a 5-5 five, five plant elemental with disguise six mana. When it's turned face up, destroy an artifact or enchantment on opponent controls. 1.75. Vengeful Tracker. You might want to pay attention to this one. One and a red for a 2-2 two, two human detective. Whenever an opponent sacks an artifact, Tracker deals two damage to them, buddy. So... Again, we're talking about Commander too much tonight, but Dockside Extortionist in Commander, this nerfs the crap out of it. It is a very specific card, and I think that Dockside is still going to be amazing in Commander, and just one card's not going to stop it, but we're on our way there, aren't we? But obviously the card's a little situational, so I'm just going to give it a two at the most. V2 Gazi Inspector is two mana, one on a green for a 1-3 Elf Detective. As an additional cost to cast it, you can collect evidence six. It has reach, and when it ETBs, if you collected that evidence, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, and you gain two life. So, kind of a two mana, two, four reach, gain two life if you can collect the evidence. That's incredible stats, but it still goes nowhere in standard, 1.5. Um, does she, however, does she, does she have a little squirrel? Yes, she has a little squirrel. And the little squirrel appears to have some sort of flashlight on it that is shining a purple or UV beam right here on these scratch marks. Uh, she has a little squirrel that's helping her investigate. Uh, this card's a five. This card's an obvious five. Voha, Jaws of the Conclave, is two, a red, and a green, and a white. Five mana for a five-five legendary wolf with vigilance, trample, and ward three. 
When Jaws of the Conclave attacks, put a plus one, plus X, plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control, where X is the number of elves you control. Draw a card for each wolf you control. So, let's evaluate this in standard. As a five mana, five, five, Vigilance, Trample, Ward three, draw a card when it attacks. Good enough? Are we close to good enough? <laughs> I don't actually think that it is. It is Wandering Emperor proof. Um, that's something. Trample is a very good ability. And Ward 3 basically means that even if they, you know, they have to have gotten all their land drops. They have to have gotten all their land drops if you're playing this on curve. And um, if they want to target it with, you know, a 2 mana removal spell that just kills it, it costs 5 mana. <laughs> it costs the same thing you put into the card if they want to kill it. That's good, you know. Um, it does have to wait to attack. But note that it doesn't have to deal combat damage. It just has to attack. And you draw a card. And like, that's, I mean, if you have elves, it does stuff too. But again, I'm just, I'm just saying if this is your only creature out, five mana, five, five, Vig, Tramp, Ward three, draw a card when it attacks is like kind of stacked a little bit. It's a little stacked. Like, I kind of like it. <laughs> so I'm going to give this card a 2.5. I think that it's just barely out of like standard contention. Cost too many colors to play. There's not a deck that it goes directly into day one. Um, so there's a lot of strikes against it, but all that said, just like based on power level in a vacuum, it's good kind of on the floor. So long as it resolves, it has a good floor. And then like the ceiling is ultra high, depending on how many other, you know, creature types that are you know, important to the card you have. So really neat, man. I, I think it's actually kind of good. War leaders, mm, baby, war leaders call. Three mana, one, a red, and a white for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, war leaders call deals one damage to each opponent. My actual, personal favorite card in the entire set. Now, I like Vane Ripper too, but if I had to pick like my number one most excited to play it in all my decks, going to put it in a cube, going to put it in two commander decks day one, going to put it in um, standard decks day one. This is the, this is the card, dude. Um, and beautiful in its simplicity too. I actually think that this set gets a bad rap for being too complex when some of its better and most noteworthy cards are like this. Super simple. Glorious Anthem, staple to an impact trimmers. That's all the card is. That's all it needs to be. It's a very good magic card. This card's very, very good. Um, is it worth skipping your turn three in an aggro deck to play this? Is it? I don't know. I really don't. But in like a tokens deck, that's going to put, you know, it's going to trigger this all the time. That's pretty good. And of course, in a tokens deck, creatures you control get plus one, plus one is pretty good too. So I don't know if this needs to be an aggro. I think it might need to be in some sort of mid-range tokens-y pile with like wedding announcement and other tokens things. I just think that um, it's obviously good with wedding announcement, by the way. That's a bolt's worth of damage, you know, if you get a token every turn. Um, and eventually it's going to make three, three, threes, you know, because wedding announcement flips over. Plus you got this anthem effect, so... Wedding announcement suddenly deals a bolt's worth of damage and puts nine power into play. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, um, I do think the card definitely has something going for it in standard. This kind of incremental damage isn't great right now. I've tried it with like eight different kinds of things and it's just never, it's never great. But if it can add to the damage you're doing in the first place, then it can be, you know, more than enough help. Also, good Lord, look at this art. I've never really looked at this art. It's beautiful art, but it doesn't really count when scoring the card. I am going to give this card a 3.5. I was reaching for that 3.75. I was I was pulling it out of my sleeve, and then I, I stuffed it back in my sleeve, and it's three and a half, three and a half, which is probably not the most objective measure, to be honest. This card is probably closer in reality to a 2.75, but again, I'm going to be doing too much with it, and I do think it has a life ahead of it. Three and a half. It's my list. Wisp Drinker Vampire is up next. Four mana, two, a white, and a black for a 2-4 Vampire Rogue with flying. Whenever another creature with power two or less ETBs under your control, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. It's cool. Seven mana to have creatures you control with power two or less gain DT and LL till end of turn. So that's a cool activated ability right there. <laughs> it's really, I like the whole package on this, but I don't like the four mana it costs to get the card out in the first place, but... This first line of text, Corpse Knight, sort of, for dudes with two power or less. And then this insane activated ability to bust a game open late. Like, it's all good, but I can't really score it more than a 2.25. And even that is obviously a quarter point over what I should be scoring it. But, 
again, my list, and I just really, really like the text on this card. <laughs> Whoa, Jack Investigator is three mana, two and a white for a two, four angel detective with flying and vigilance. There's that three mana, two, four flying vigilance stat line again. And I just think that's good by itself. But at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. This might be actually kind of difficult to engineer depending on what you're doing. Um, so there's that. I won't say you'll get this every time, but you can fall back on a three mana, two, four flying vigilance. And if this, if this, if this investigates like once in a game, I think it's probably worth it. So it's probably isn't as good as Tomic or it's better than Tomic. I haven't decided, but in my world, it's not as good as Tomic. So I'll give this card a solid 2.75. Very playable, playable card. World Souls Rage. Are there more cards in the set? We've been on the W's forever. X, a red, and a green for a sorcery that deals X damage to any target. Put up to X land cards from your hand and or graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. Uh, I'm giving this card a three. Cheers. Any target? I know. It's, it's, it's two mana plus X, which always ruins the equation a little bit in terms of like, well, is it worth it? You know what I mean? I'm not sure. You know? So... I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't score it so high, but just like removal spell that ramps you removal spell that ramps you. I just can't stop thinking (laughs) like for four mana, I might remove that guy and get two lands, which is just much, much better than invasion of Zendikar. So that's nuts. And then later in the game in your ramp deck, you're obviously playing a ramp deck, right? In your ramp deck later in the game, you draw it and it can just like dome your opponent for six. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a three. I like this card a lot. Wrench is a single white mana for an artifact. It's clue equipment. You can sack it for two mana and draw a card. You can equip it for two. And the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, has vigilance, and three tap, tap target creature, 1.75, just like the rest of these. Yaris, this is the last card in the set. Yes, Yaris, War of the Old Gods. It's four mana, two, a red, and a green for a 4-4 four, four legendary centaur druid. Other creatures you control have haste. Whenever one or more face-down creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Whenever a face-down creature you control dies, return it to the battlefield face-down under its owner's control. If it's a permanent card, permanent card, then turn it face-up. So, never-ending face-down, guys. Um, haste on all your dudes globally on a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. Um, it's other dudes, whatever. And then some card draw, but it's mostly specific to disguise decks, but... I guess you could make a point. It's a four mana, four, four global haste. So that's kind of good enough. But in disguise decks, it goes there. <laughs> that's about it for the rest of time. Um, I guess it's a disguise commander if you want it to be. So that's something to write home about if you want to write home to anybody. I will give this card a 2.25 and be done. Hit the timer, everybody. Four, four hours and 12 minutes and 58 seconds. So four hours, 13 minutes. We started at 34 minutes in. So let's see here. That means it took us too much time. It means it took us about three hours and 40 minutes or so to do this, which is not our best time. <laughs> not even not even close. <laughs> yeah, minus 34 minutes, four hours, 13. So that's not a good time. It's not our best time. I thought we might do a good time. Um, this time, because like the last two sets have had like a buttload of adventures, right? And that takes more time to read. And then, uh, LCI had a lot of like double face cards, which takes more time to read and talk about. So I thought we would easily beat our record for LCI, but we did not. <laughs> I had way too much to say about these cards, man. <clears throat> way too much. But let me, let me take it out of here. Cause the, the YouTube people have been here way too long. They got stuff to do. They got work to do. They got blah, blah, blah. They probably been watching me at work if I had to guess. So I got to let them go. I'm look, Hey, YouTube guys, join me on the Patreon. If you want to, um, my voice is shot. I've, I've really put myself through the ringer to bring you this content. So help me out. If you can, it's just a dollar a month. Like the video. If you don't have any scratch on you, that helps an awful lot. You can also subscribe to the channel. If you want more stuff like this, I really do put myself through things for you. I think it's worth a sub. If other people were doing this on YouTube, I'd sub to them. Nobody else is doing the full set review speed run. That's why you got to sub to me. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. YouTube folk again, Twitch crowd stay in for a second, but for the time being, just let me know how you felt about all my rankings. Note that I cannot get every single ranking exactly right. That would be witchcraft if I could somehow pull that off. So <laughs> cut me a little bit of slack down there, but just let me know where I'm way, way off. And I will catch you cats later. I am Dev from the place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love.
and be kind.